Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Go. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Hey, everybody. Hello, Dan. Rocky Hello, Dan. Andy. How you doing? <laughs> good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I mean, I've just been talking to Ryan Burke, so, you know, you know, so, you know how it is. These days and these days, yeah. <laughs> um, I've had a lovely day today. I've uh, received a bass, which I suppose I should leave till later in the conversation but i'm so excited by having received a bass in the post that uh it has That's to happen now pretty cool yeah and, am uh, i still so blurry in the images yeah you're super blurry why is that no idea and, i'm super uh, crisp on obs yeah um on obs on my side you are also blocky but uh, at least your camera is working this week hey <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the to the dear listeners and viewers, I actually um, texted Dan yesterday to uh, to ask him if he had uh, charged his camera batteries because we had a little incident last week. Where nobody remembers, no, nobody remembers. No, no, I, I wasn't going to bring. I mean, you brought it up. But... Yeah. Oh no, was it me? No, you're you're back. You're all nice and clear now. <laughs> well. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 35 of the Guitar Stories podcast. Man. Unbelievable. Hello, if you're listening yeah. to the audio version on your podcatcher. Um, I'm going to go straight in, Dan, and say, if you're listening to the, to the podcast, then go ahead and leave us a five-star review. Don't wait till the end. I That's guarantee good. you this is going to be at least a five-star episode. It will be a five-star experience for sure. Let me yeah. let me read out. We always say we read out the comments. Let me oh, let on, me then. read out. Let me read out the comments that we. I'll, I'll eat some chocolate received. while you're doing that. Yeah, sure. So thanks a lot to Eccentric, who gave us a five-star rating, and he wrote all the interesting and funny stuff around guitars with the most awesome hosts, Andy and Dan. I absolutely love this podcast and these guys. Thank you very very much. Um, who else? We nice. had two guys, one guitar topic from Olifa. Two guitar nerds talking about gear and stuff happening around the world. Love it. Give them a listen if you love everything around the guitar. Thanks so much, Olifa. <laughs> Very, <laughs> Very nice. good name. We have N3 Guitar Whore. N3 Guitar Whore. N3 Guitar Whore. Yeah. N3 or N3. Because like, that sounds like an old lady if it's N. And that's. It's, no, it's no, no, it's A N A N three. So A N three guitar hall. Yeah. So I'll he to, or she. I have to ask other people about that. Yeah, I assume it's a he because I don't. Yeah, well, anyways. So he or she wrote fantastic guitar podcast. Highly recommended. These were the last three reviews. Thanks so much, guys. Much appreciated. Yeah, it makes if me you warm inside. Yeah, yeah. And if you haven't like uh, rated Guitar podcast on iTunes or Spotify, just grab a cell phone from your neighbor, or colleague at work. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Your wife. Just, you know something? You know. I'm not sure if I've rated the show. Oh, no, I have. I have. I, I was doing it whilst I was downvoting the 60 Cycle Ham show. So it was ah, definitely you yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. same yeah. action, just an automated yeah. service that I set up. Yeah, well, you got to keep the balance. You give five stars here, you give one star there. It's just it's the nature of the game. <laughs> oh my goodness, Andy, how's your week been so far? What day is it? Tuesday. Um, yeah, I have had one of the most productive weeks of my life. Uh, I, I, I got a whiteboard thing, and we got a permanent marker and a ruler, and I drew lines on it for days of the week. And I planned my week. Now, this is obviously nothing new to someone of your caliber, Dan. But to someone like me, my my version of planning is like having a post-it note somewhere upon post-it notes and going, right, I've got to do that at some point. And then people emailing me saying, where's that? And I go, oh, I'm doing it at some point. And um, now, now I've got a release schedule for the channel. I've got, you know, like I know where I should be at certain parts of the week. It's amazing. It's really, it's like I feel I can breathe, you know? 
Yeah, that's good. It takes a lot of pressure from you if you kind of organize yourself. But the, actually, the posty posted thing works for me too. So I do stuff. I put it on post its and then I'll just you know put it here and there. So like a schedule basically. And if something moves, you can easily move it from one day to another without forgetting about that. Yeah. I don't like so that. So congrats on that relief. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How about you? Have you had a good week? Yeah, yeah. I had an excellent weekend. And as of today, mm -hmm. my house got a proper cable connection. That works. You got internet. I got internet and Wi-Fi and everything. Netflix, Disney Plus. Oh, you can just go and Which, bathe in the electromagnetic field. It's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm about to set up like a whole mesh kind of network and everything. So complete, complete disaster. But it will be great. But speaking of Disney Plus, I've got one important question. Yes. Can I see the baby? What a precious little thing. I'm, I'm stroking his eyes. Sorry, if anyone who's listening, <laughs> that I'm holding Grogu and, and poking him in the rather large eyes. Why do you ask, Dan? <laughs> oh, I'm missing the Mandalorian so much. All right. Uh... And, and funny coincidence, uh, if I just move myself away, apparently the connection is pretty bad. I don't know why, but can you see what's in the background? I know what can it is. I can see. I can see a slightly green and brown blur, and a purple blur, and a black blur. Uh, and I don't I'm know why that is. I'm guessing there's. Oh, there's a Dan blur in the middle now. Um, <laughs> but in the middle, it's a Grogu blur. Grogu it's Le a, a Lego blur. Lego Grogu blur. Yeah, actually, a gift I received from my boss a, for a moving house as a like. What's that? Moving present. Hello present. Uh, moving in present. I don't know what a the proper term is. Housewarming gift. Housewarming gifts. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're I at, like it. Let's go to the chat because people are complaining about the internet connection. Is this 1999 internet? <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is we're, we're also live uh, streaming from California right now. So... Um, you know, Dan's got all the way to California, back to Germany, all the way to Austria, you know, complicated. <laughs> but um, yeah. at least his voice is soft and sweet. Um, awesome. Have we got any news this week? I don't think we did any news. No, I didn't bring any news. You didn't bring any news? Did you? Let's, no. find, let's find out. Um, yeah. I mean, what I can do is to press that button. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's play the news sting anyway. Um, press it. <laughs> Biggest news is we've got a Discord. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had that last week already, right? Yeah, but we've still got it. So it's you know, and and we've got like, hang on, I could probably log on right now. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because we've actually had some submissions via the Discord for this week's episode of embarrassing band photos. So it's not awesome. just uh, Dan, Ryan, Burke, and myself. This week we've got viewers' photos, and um, some of them were submitted by the by the uh, what's it called Discord. I'm still learning this this cool stuff. I mean, I've yeah. So I'm going to put the the link to the the Discord in the YouTube chat in case you haven't joined it already, and it will also be in the um, in the description to the video. And then Ryan's trying to talk to me via the, the chat of the YouTube. Who gave you the idea to have a Discord? Well, me, <laughs> about a year ago. But then you, about a week ago, to actually go, actually do something about it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What, how, how do you fret a, a Discord on, on the electric guitar? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. All right. That was a low one. I know. Sorry. That, that fruit was so low-hanging, it was under the ground. <laughs> that, sir, is a potato joke. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but probably with this finger. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, so that, that's all the news we've got. I mean, I, I don't think it was a very big new week for news. Nope. Nothing much happened. So let's go on to my pick of the week, because I want to bring in Ryan awesome. Burke and see his embarrassing gig photos. There's some stinkers. <laughs>
This week, Andy's pick of the week is um, Rick Beata. It is, um, I'm, I'm pushed to choose this as pick of the week, but it is Rick Beato's new signature Gibson um, special double cut uh, signature. And I can't help but like it, Dan. I'm having issues. I can't yep. help but like it. Uh, it's yeah, obviously very near to something that I I um, did absolutely no work on with Harley Benton. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love I love P nineties. I love Pelham Blue. Yeah. I love bound fretboards. Um, I don't really watch Rick Beato, so I have no interest in the fact that it's his signature. Um, mm-hmm. I just think it's a nice looking guitar. Yep, fully agreed. I like the the bound fretboard and the color. Actually, if you if you would have liked that guitar, you'd be kind of like a psychopath or something. Yeah, yeah, sociopath. lying or lying. just like socio sociopath or psychopath because you know it's it's let's say it's pretty close to what you came up with. And uh, what what's the color called? Is that Beato blue or no? It's Pelham, right? It's just standard Pelham blue, I believe. All right, yeah. Um, and uh, I've got some more pictures of it. If you're watching the video version, there it is on its side. And as far yeah. as I can tell, as far as most people can tell, the only Rick Beato nurse is on the truss rod cover. So it's uh, it's stuck on the truss rod cover. Um, yeah, yeah. But I do believe Rick Beato well, is, is quite short, or rather shorter than me, which is not difficult. But I, I'm told that he's a medium-sized man. So okay. where I'm going with this is the, the neck profile. Okay. Oh, now I'm relieved. <laughs> what? <It's> just, <laughs> I'm not saying it's actually that big as it is on the screen. I'm not not picking on Rick. I'm just picking on All Rick. Right. That's a new uh, a new segment we'll have next week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. I'm interested in the price, which is why I can't love it because I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, people in the chat, let me know how much you think that guitar is going to be. But I think that is going to be between three and four thousand dollars. Whoa! Okay, that's a that's quite a guess actually, because that would be extremely steep. Is that custom shop or just regular production line, like core? That's a big question. I here, believe right? it's not custom shop. I do know that the Billy Joe Armstrong guitar that was fairly similar to this, um, in terms of the fact that it's a, a junior style guitar. Uh, yeah. was about one thousand seven hundred dollars. So that's so let's say two thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, I think two K sounds reasonable. Yeah, I mean reasonable in terms of where you would expect them to land. Yeah, not reasonable in you can spend two K on. Ryan's offering fourteen dollars. Eric is offering one thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Sarang is twelve hundred or GTFO. <laughs> um, Michael Kraus says no way. It's not close to four thousand. Okay, Michael. <laughs> Um, 1500 no way 3k maybe i'm just being inflammatory just so i can say oh my goodness it's a lot cheaper than i actually imagined <laughs> uh 60 cycle steve is here if it is actually awesome. steve hello steve um we what we've done steve is we've done you know the the one first and we'll we'll upgrade to you at some other point because you now we've got to get the you know you've got to get through something to get to the nice stuff is what i'm trying to I'm digging a hole here. <laughs> so um, um my right. second pick, sorry, is uh wait, the wait, 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 we want to be critical. We want to be positive, but also critical. So on the plus side, I totally see that it's a great looking guitar. I like the bound fretboard. I like the overall looks. Like I said, it's pretty close to the to the Ferris blue one that Harry Benton did. But I've got one big issue with that model, and that is, why is that a signature guitar that's more like a regular production guitar like any other signature model that, that Gibson has in their lineup? I don't even know if, if, if these pickups are kind of stock pickups or, or specifically voiced for Rick. And uh, I kind of wonder if, if the world really needs a signature guitar that has no real USP compared to regular production models. You know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for for signature guitars, but I always like those kind of um, idiocracy, uh, idiosyncrasies that those models bring about. 
you know, like, I don't know, like a handle, which is completely weird. Or uh, I know fan threads, you know, when that was a thing or like Strandberg with their neck that is kind of unique. And, and you have Per Nielsen with his blood finish and all that stuff. But with that model, I don't really see why should you go for a signature guitar and play uh, and, and actually pay that kind of plus for the royalties that Rick is going to get instead of just buying a regular production guitar in a similar color. Where's the point? Is that a rhetoric question or do you want an answer? <laughs> well, uh, we can uh, we can ask uh, the guys in the chat. But I'll, I'll be, I, I, I'll, I can I'll give be you my take on that if you like. Yeah. My take yeah, on yeah. that is that I don't think currently there's a 2P90 Junior Special from Gibson in Pelham Blue. I could be wrong, but I don't think mm -hmm. that one is currently in the lineup. And for mm -hmm. me, is a signature guitar just not the guitar that one artist would pick? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, Billy Joe Armstrong, to go back to the example I used already, is just a single cut Les Paul Jr. or special. Um, Slash's signature is just a Les Paul with his signature on it with some pickups, you know. And when I say just, yeah, but at least I think they they have like specific colors and uh, you know I, I'm I'm just missing that that sure a signature guitar cannot always be like completely built from scratch that's 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 for sure but I'm like missing that kind of X factor because Pelham Blue has been on so many guitars before at least if it would have had like a specific paint job or like I said specific pickups that are custom wound and specifically voiced for him but uh, I might be completely wrong and maybe the pickups are a the USP kind of thing but you know we've seen guitars like the the silver sky that have been you know given a hard time by a lot of fans and they actually have been pretty brave or the Pia where some people thought like when they, when it got, got leaked unfortunately that it's a joke actually and then you know they <laughs> looked at it and it grew grew on them and once you saw them live you would go wow now I get it you know like when, when we when we were at that interview when when Steve was kind of you know, uh, elaborating on his idea and all that stuff. So, I know. think the signature. I, I'm stealing off a few comments here, but let me. Um, all right. The signature feature is you can't play any songs on it that you didn't write. <laughs> and therefore, an instant anti demonetization feature from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying, Dan, but we're going to have to move on because I I disagree in the sense that I believe any signature guitar is just something specced by a certain person so i'm, I'm happy to okay. move on you're not wrong right. and and i'm not wrong it's just i'm less wrong than you are <laughs> <laughs> no um i, I it, it is looks it looks great do. just let, let, it's, let a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice like guitar a, right yeah, can i now nice talk guitar. about the line six helix update of course good of course right 3.1 the update that they couldn't quite fit into three um, they've added loads of new stuff, including a drippy reverb, which our friend Ryan Burke has done a video about, and I very much enjoyed the video. Uh, they've got the the new orange rock reverb amp in there, and I know it's an, a relatively old piece of gear, but my the thing the re the reason I've picked it is that I love to see that whoever has invested in a Helix for right, maybe on day one is still getting quality updates. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Ryan will tell us probably later if we ask him that uh, the, the reverb is a big, big um, uh, jump in quality and usability. The rat uh, pedal that's in there is far superior to the vermin that was in there before. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really, really cool update. Um, and they don't need to keep adding amps and pedals and stuff, but it is cool. And it's it's more about the fact that you don't need all of them, but maybe you just kick out um, you know, the old rat, for example, or or, or stick on the new orange or I shouldn't say orange, Mandarin rocker uh, amp. <laughs> yeah, I just okay. think it's I just think it's very cool of Line Six to continue to support which is actually what everybody should be doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so those but, are my picks but, of the week. Um, any any thoughts on that, Dan? Because I really don't want to dwell upon it too much because it's a little bit of a boring one. Oh, well. Is it, I, I find it interesting to see that stuff like that gets some more love than compared to previous years. And I, I like the approach that, that companies do if they kind of address the short-lividness of, of products, that those kind of product life cycles nowadays with pedals and everything are super short and there's that hype and then it, they're gone. 
So if a product st sticks around a little bit longer and is kind of updated and new firmware increases like the sounds and functionality, I really like that approach. And actually, I think that's the main selling point for brands like Kemper. Mm. You know, no matter if you bought that Kemper in 21 or 10 years before, it will still sound the same and has the same functionality. And uh, I think this is like a a promise that you that you give your customers and they trust you and uh, that can be a big plus you shouldn't you shouldn't be you know effing around with that but as long as that is still valid and you keep your promise i think that's a, a usp and something that kind of yeah for a lot of people makes it easier for them to spend a lot of money on, on your product compared to maybe other brands that just forget about it after after you know two years or so yeah yeah if if i were to be skeptical dan I might say that the Quad Cortex has been released and the Helix stuff is trying to stay relevant. That's only if <laughs> I was course. going to be skeptical. Of course, of course, of course. And that's just business. But on the other hand, I mean, if it's a free upgrade, at least all exactly. the, the people that bought it before would benefit from it. So, you know. Free stuff. Everybody loves free stuff. Yeah, Let's go to yeah. dance. Go try that up. Dance. What's your pick of the week, Dan? John Schofield. <laughs> Mr. John Schofield. Yeah, yeah. He has an anniversary model. And it's actually old because it got released already during Virtual Nam. But since now we have some nice pictures and some more details, I thought it would be nice to kind of point it out as a news because we spread that all around the world this week and or last week already. So it, it's kind of news. And always it's it's a pretty nice story to be told about uh, John kind of working with Ibanez and now I mean 20 years that's a long time two decades right yeah my, my friend Jürgen um, has one of the the John Schofields that's about I don't know three or four maybe maybe four years old and he's mm -hmm. very very happy with it I've played it and uh, very much enjoyed it he, in fact I thought I think he built two or three and chose the best one um, <laughs> right I think maybe yeah. two, but um, yeah, he's one of those guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he loves it, as far as I know. I think I think that's his couch guitar. He has oh wow, his, yeah, that's I a good couch that's... guitar. Yeah. yeah, a little bit louder than than regular regular electric guitars. Yeah, but the cool story about Sco is that actually they started uh, like they approached him in '81, so that's already 40 years ago. And he was, I think, he was on tour in Japan, and then the guys from Hoshino met him and, and kind of provided him one of the Art Star guitars at that time. And I think his old Gibson, like nineteen sixty ES three three five, had already, you know, some issues with the neck that had warped uh, during during touring. So they handed him a stock AS two hundred, and he started, you know, playing that and got used to it. And fast forward several years, they kind of, you know provided him new guitars but he always fell back to the AS200 and loved that and gravitated towards its sound and and, and the feel so basically um yeah 20 years ago they decided okay man if you if you like that guitar so much why don't we come up with something uh that is actually yours that has your name written on it and has some um you know idiosyncrasies that you actually want in a guitar so they flew him into LA and you know did measurements on his original guitar and uh, that old AS200 was basically uh, like the basis for for his signature model. So they measured every detail and kind of came up with the John Schofield model, the JSM, in 2001. So 20 years after they met for the first time. And now we have wow. his anniversary model, which is a, a very nice one. It comes with uh, ladybug pickups. It's it's like custom voiced for for that uh, for that particular model. Did you uh, say ladybug. Ladybug, yeah, is that a nice name? It really is, yeah. There's there's two words yeah. that don't feel like they should go together, but they do. <laughs> Ladybug, Ladybug, yeah. I want to be in a band called a Ladybug. Yeah, it's a pretty a pretty cool name. A really right? good band. Name. Yeah, and I mean this this guitar, it's it's like the typical John Schofield model, but it like I said, it has some some special pickups and a super elegant elegant design and, and everything it, it just oozes class and, and i really like that it's made in mm. japan and only available in this year so um yeah, if everyone is in into john schofield and wants to want to have one of those models then uh yeah check out your dealer and you know they'll be in stores in end of q2 early q3 i guess 
Is that a nice one? I, I really dig the looks, you know. It's a, it's a black guitar. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is time to buy, <laughs> borrow, or burn. Buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> buy, borrow, or burn. This week, there are only three options available, so everybody gets a little shout. We have Dan's suggestion yep. of the new Schofield signature. We have another signature, the Rick Beato signature from Gibson. And we have the Line 6 update for the Helix. So people in the chat, three options. You have to buy one, you have to borrow one, and you have to burn one. And I, if Ryan and Steve are there as well, I'd love if they would join in. Um, because that would be fun. You know, let's see where everybody else sits in this world. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to guess which you're not going to burn or borrow, Dan. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the chat first. We've got Sarang would buy the Beato. He'd borrow the Schofield and he'd burn the Helix. Ouch. Okay. okay. It, so it sounds so so horrid, doesn't it, when, with the word burn? But I guess that's, that's the rules, you know, because the alliteration. Um, LLM Guitar Corner would buy the Ibanez, borrow the Gibson, burn the Helix. Team Player would buy the Ibanez, borrow the Line 6, burn the Gibson. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I found that funny. <laughs> um, just just because it is. McKeel would burn the Beato, borrow the Line 6, buy the Ibanez, and trade it in for a beer for Poo Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's brotherhood. Also, thank you to McKeel for the uh, $2 uh, live chat for Dan's webcam fund. We don't know what's going on tonight. Sorry about that. Uh... Let's. I mean, Dan. I was. I was nattering on. Uh, can you please uh, fill fill us in with your choices? Yeah, of course. But definitely, uh, my choice would be the skill as a, as the purchase. So buy the skill field. Um, yeah, borrow a Helix to check out what the update brought, and actually just get rid of the of the Beato. Not because it's not a great guitar, but uh, like I said, I I don't get the point. I'd love. I'd love to see like a real Beato with with more custom specs. So that's why I burn it. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think I think I agree with you. No way. I think I would buy the Schofield. The Sco, sorry, because we know him. Uh I would <laughs> I would I am borrowing the Line 6 Helix from, from Line 6. So, you know, I've got to choose okay. that one. Well, borrow, you know. Forget that I've got it. I really don't <laughs> want to burn the Beato, but I really... A, enjoy... Those are the rules. I know those are the rules, Dan. We discussed it. <laughs> it's very simple. Three yeah. options. Buy, borrow, or burn. Even I can deal with this. Take them. <laughs> right. You know what? May I, may I give you a hand and, and uh, just say, actually, I, I think it would be great to see you borrow the Beato and do a AB on the Harley Benton Ferris Blue. All right, so I'll borrow, I'll, I'll borrow the Beato, I'll buy the Schofield, and I'll have to burn the Helix update? But I'll just, download, just, use... just, I'll just download another one. It's fine. It's fine. I yeah. can deal with it. Yeah. Ryan's going to buy the Helix, borrow another Helix, and burn the borrowed Helix. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Alexis Guitars, buy the Gibson, borrow the Ibanez, burn the Helix. Um, Fraser, buy the Scott. All right, well, some interesting choices there. Speaking of yep. interesting choices, it's topic of the week. What a little segue there. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, our topic this week is embarrassing band photos. Now, we got there mainly because Dan has sent me some embarrassing band photos of himself in the past. And <laughs> there are they are hilarious. And I realized I have some as well, which are awful. Goodness awful. However, <laughs> I feel confident that we do not have the worst photos that will be shown on this podcast tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I just spilled water over my desk. If you don't mind, Anyways. ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring in our wonderful guest of the evening. Um, I, I'm so honored to be 
speaking to my friend and yours, Mr. Ryan Burke. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been planning that. Upwards of 10, 15 seconds. Oh, goodness, that's the most planning I've ever heard. <laughs> I put it on my calendar. I have a whiteboard too. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan from Sixty Cycle Home, welcome to the Guitar Stories podcast. Let's let's imagine we've done all the what's it like to be on a real podcast jokes and you know what's it like. Let's imagine we've done that. Let's just sort of sort sure, of sm sure. smooth over, smooth over that. Um, well, I think I've, I've done the show before, right? So I've been on a real podcast at least once before. That's true. Yeah, but that was part of a, a an insane posse. It was an insane posse. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that we were clowns pretty much yeah i was i was i was okay. hoping you were to pick up on that somehow um, now that i've described it, i understand it yes <laughs> yeah it's things are funnier when you explain them isn't that right dan mm -hmm. that's how jokes work <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a pleasure to have you on because people think we're enemies but um we're only enemies in real life on the internet we're friends Right. Oh, yeah. No, we, we have to keep up appearances and make everyone think that YouTubers are friends and go hang out with each other and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the business. Or are we friends in real life? I can never remember. I, I confuse the two, which is not helpful. I put you together a friend on my taxes for government reasons. Why am I on your taxes? <laughs> yeah, we, it's a US thing. We have to list our friends and enemies on. Right. This okay. is not a joke. It doesn't know why I'm saying you this. <laughs> this please, some funny. Americans There's... in the chat confirm this. What is this man I'm talking being... about? I'm just being uh, bizarre. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For the sake of entertaining myself. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure IRS will be investigating further after today's right, episode. Right. Like, oh, is he really his friend? We'll find out. <laughs> Next episode. They're going to audit our friendship. <laughs> I would love that. I'd love to have friendships audited. <laughs> That's like a Black Mirror episode right there. Yeah, it is. It Man, is I miss that Mirror. show. Miss that show so much. It needs to come back. Yeah. I think, I think next, week, next week's show may look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, my wife told me they're working on a new season of uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Did you guys watch that one? Nope. Oh, yeah. It was good. That was really the first good. season was good. Yeah. So I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to a new season of that. Hmm. Yeah, that was good. Way was better. Very entertaining. Way better than the... Sorry, you broke up there, Ryan. I believe you said way <laughs> better. Way better than The Mandalorian. No. Yes. No, yes. No. Most things are. We we have some issues with the signal. Um, we're very sorry. The connection is pretty bad tonight. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> <off the show. laughs> again, so actually, I, I'll, I'll blame uh, Ryan. Yeah, I will say. I will say. I think Mandalorian is better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. All right, I one thousand percent agree. Um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is. I don't know. I want to say. Here's me walking. Here's me watching like the first four episodes of Falcon and Winter Soldier, sleeping because it's so boring. I'm just, just boring. Are you saying that something happens in in five? It gets better. The 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 I think the fourth and the fifth episode pick up a little bit, but man, it just drags to get there. And it, how does it drag when there's like like ten minute long action scenes? And like, why is this so boring? Like, what are, what have they gotten wrong to make this show so boring? Right, I'm glad you say this because I really thought there was something wrong with me. No, no. not that, not that we all have something. to like the same stuff. Not that we have to like you no. know whatever's being released by the the people that make the things. People, the people that I see liking it and excited about it like it because they're already big fans of those characters within the comics. Like people who just watch TV shows and movies are like, mm -hmm. "What is this? Why is this? Why is this the way it is?" <laughs> <laughs> to me it feels like they took the most boring characters from the avengers and and then decided to give them a show to play placate us placate us keep us calm well, 
I think Falcon is fun, but just Bucky is there's like there's he doesn't have any chemistry with anyone ever. Like there's nothing fun about him at any point. Like he's got a metal arm. Cool. Now get him to act in a way that's interesting with other actors. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no one try to trick him into doing that for a little while. <laughs> Uh, i think there's one episode left right so you never know right right. they're gonna turn it all around and i'm gonna be singing its praises on the last episode (laughs) probably (laughs) welcome back next week like sidetrack your show you were gonna talk about band photos and here we are no i mean we're just sort of sort of smoothing over the fact that we've got a terrible internet connection to that apparently but i'm watching it on the on the old youtubes and it looks fine to me so oh fair enough yeah it looks fine for me on my side and you know i'm on the other side of the world andy yes. do you fancy to do some sort of friendship test with ryan i'd i'd love nothing less <laughs> <laughs> but let's... like something how how well do you know ryan because actually i had a question in advance of the show from from one of our listeners who is asking why is ryan's channel called 60 cycle hum because that's not something positive and you wouldn't call your youtube channel like things that you don't like like empty toilet pe- uh, toilet paper holder or something like that I so it would be more appropriate it yeah do, do you know Andy? content appropriate yeah where that's where that comes from can you answer that question for rick the question came from rick that question came from rick hi rick what rick beato no okay rick team play rick oh we're demonetized uh oh <laughs> <laughs> that's my three bucks gone <laughs> so 60 cycle home i believe we've I've, i don't think i've ever asked you directly ryan um but i believe it, it is a clever name i like it i like i think it's like knowing your personality i would say that it's slightly guitar related without being too specific and it's a hum therefore it's a noise and you started as a podcast okay Slightly unwanted to be self-deprecating. <laughs> am I? Am I anywhere close? I, th- I think you're capturing the kind of soul of it. I don't know. There's, there's not like a hard like thought on why we picked it. Like Steve and I would just shout like potential names at each other, and then like finally we shouted that, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah, that'll work." I think we just wanted a name that wasn't like guitar podcast show. You know, like. <laughs> guitar tones dudes or something like that you know if we wanted who, who to have, something have guitar a, and podcast in the title of their guitar podcast <laughs> that's so be, lame right who, who would do yeah, that so lame. <laughs> <laughs> we, want, we wanted to you know i'm a i'm a advertising and marketing and design guy outside of all this so i wanted to have something that kind of stood out yeah. against the noise of all the other channels and so far no one else has come up with names that or even close, but a lot of other channels are more successful. So <laughs> actually succeed in my goals. I don't know. <laughs> no one is trying to steal the stupid thing that I did. <laughs> I'm uniquely inferior. <laughs> I, I think like personally, I, I connect to the name because, you know, so much of our content and our mentality towards guitars is focusing on what is imperfect about them and embracing that. So. I don't that's know. A good approach. Yeah. A smart answer to that? I don't know. Absolutely. You should yeah. definitely write that down. I'm sure Steve is writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> or on the on the Google Drive or something in a note. Mm. Awesome. So on a friendship scale from from one to ten, how many points would you give Andy for his answer? Oh uh, yeah, that's that's a one to ten. I think that's a good like two point seven six. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah I thought so too. Yeah. Not to get too specific and too finite. <laughs> I was hoping for something in the first quarter, and I, I, almost, mm. I almost nailed it. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're in the first quarter for sure. Yeah, yeah that's just good. passed. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Which one's the highest? Is it one or ten? Uh, it's ten. Yeah. Oh. It wouldn't be one. Yes. <laughs> you never know. You have to specify, and Dan didn't specify. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like yeah, if you if you ran a race and said, "Hey, well done, you're number ten. You go, "Oh, great, yeah." And people always ask, act like one is the lowest in that scenario. Like zero is the lowest, and you could do decimals of zero. Yeah, you can be like, "Oh, that was a zero point two. Good luck." 
Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, have we got any more questions? Maybe maybe Ryan could ask something about me. You never know. I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, I have a question as you're, as you're an American. How many liters is 32 ounces? How many liters? Yeah. Uh, 32 ounces. I would guess it's like a, a liter and a third or something like that. I don't know. I don't think in liters. I, uh, 32 ounces is like a big gulp cup. That's my, that's my immediate <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 30 it's, ounces, that's the big one. It weighs as much as 600 hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, American measurements. This pea base is roughly four sheep wide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that from a certain other <laughs> podcaster who, who tr likes to measure in certain ways, like flounders and others. <laughs> uh, I always use the metal zone scale when I ever want to compare the size to something. You know, like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's five metal zones wide. Incredible. <laughs> Nice. So I remember that, the podcast we did with Steve from Boston. He, he would measure everything in, in artist models. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I remember? remember? It was like, oh, yeah, yeah that Ivan is artist. Oh, well, I could, I could afford like three Ivan is artists for that X amount. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, uh, it's 0 0.946 liters. So you were sadly wrong. So it's, it's, it's less than a liter. Less than a liter. Yep. Apparently, because oh. I've got this bottle and it, it gives me little little motivational tips. Apparently, at eight a.m. I should get started, and then at nine a.m. I should remember my goal. At ten a.m. I should keep <laughs> chugging, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a bit sad at eleven a.m. because I, I it says don't give up, and that's too deep for eleven a.m. And then noon is <laughs> nap. Noon is almost there. Oh my gosh, this 1 is depressing. PM, 1 p.m. is, what are you doing with your life? I'm a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sorry, you did it. Great. That, no, that bottle's way too ambitious for me. Like, I, <laughs> it's not, you did it. <laughs> it might be like you did 10 it. p.m. When it, you did it, now go to bed. <laughs> what did you achieve with your day? I drank 32 ounces of water, which is almost a liter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that's that all, depressing? Is this just like that's depressing? Drink all the water. <laughs> all the water by one p.m. I've done it. I yeah. drink all the water. Like the goal at two p.m. is pee it all out, get it all out. No, no, that's the you goal for like ten thirty, eleven thirty, twelve thirty. <laughs> are there any doctors in the audience can we get andy's bladder diagnosed if there are some doctors in the audience then we really need to question the medical systems in our, in our lives <laughs> <laughs> please go and, go and do something else um i want to get onto these embarrassing <laughs> band things i know ryan you've been in some bands and you were in a band with steve from 60 cycle home so that's is that where you guys kind of solidified your friendship yeah, I'd say so. I, I met the drummer first, and I was like, do you know any other musicians? And he's like, well, I know Steve. I was like, he's in the band. He doesn't know it yet, but Steve is in the band now. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I actually had two bands together. We had like a middle, like we had a, a band that like we only did for like a year or something like that with some other friends. But but the band I, the, the band I sent you all the photos of was the first one. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, I'm going to press a button which might bring up my first photo, but I should let you know and warn you, if you're listening to the audio version, this is not going to be very entertaining. <laughs> <If you're... laughs> we'll do our best to as describe someone... it. Yep. Here, here, here's my expertise as a podcaster. Not, a, not an officially like great podcaster the way you guys are, but I did a podcast for years and years that was photo-based and had no video, and it was just describing photos. All and right. I still why we did it that way for so long and i listened <laughs> and i enjoyed yeah. <laughs> apparently After, it works you can just photos in a podcast and people will listen can you imagine if you actually took that as a business plan to, to like a bank or something and, and... <laughs> 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 photos in a podcast 
terrible idea. <laughs> How do people see these? Well, they don't. You just talk about yeah, them and them describe them. them. Oh, here's a photo. Oh, you'd love to see this photo, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, All right, um, so stupid. Let's, go, let's go to the first section. Um, oh, it doesn't bring up my photo, but we're all still here. That's good. Um, awesome. Here, we'll go with mine first because I, I brought a few up. Um, and I'm sorry, but uh, they're just not good. And I don't know which one is which, so I'm I'm just stalling. But this is my first one. Is that you? <laughs> that is me. In, You're embarrassed. S- I'm embarrassed. I'll give you the reason. Not because of the fact that I'm super skinny and, and, and uh, so I'm describing far too much here. I'm playing that jazz master that I sold. No, oh, that's the embarrassing part. Like <laughs> I, I gigged it for like four gigs, and the strings kept popping off the bridge. All the jazz master things that we, you know, yeah. And I now miss yeah. that '90s Japanese jazz master so hard. That's embarrassing. Also, the shirt looks as if I could be in a band with you, Ryan, which we'll find out about later. <laughs> um, I was going to say, this is the best you've ever did, looked. Thanks. Did you remember what songs? Do you remember what songs you played? Well, that looks to <coughs> me like a sort of A minus, A seventh. Mm-hmm. A seventh? Yep. Does that look like an A seven to you guys? An A seven yep. to me. You're doing a little extra something with your pinky. Can't tell if you're fretting that. Yeah, I, I think I'm putting that extra note on there to make it an, a really super seventh. So I'm going to guess that oh, is that's something. A, that's an A seventh diminished nine. I can tell just by looking. Right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I mean, I can I can zoom in, but I'm glad you didn't know. Um, <laughs> I think it's something Beatles. Oh really? Wow. Um, but that was just after or just before the drummer's dad came up and asked if he could put his jacket behind the drum kit. So we lost all our <laughs> um, our rock and roll um, imagined um, cool at that point. Good set, son. Can I store this back here? Although yeah, yeah. it made me laugh so hard and it was so beautiful that it was, it was worth it. Um, here's another one. This is a photo session. I did with that band. Oh, look. oh my gosh. In... What, what's that sweater? I love that it's a real photo that you took yeah. like a picture of. <laughs> you can see <laughs> yeah. the photo. So, it doesn't have the in orange at the bottom or something like that. We've got uh, John on the left, who's now married to my cousin, so he's now part of my family. Um, in the oh, wow. Yeah, wow. in real life, IRL. Um, then we've got me right at the front. Doing what he thinks a lead singer should do is be at the front and do something weird. <laughs> it's very 90s. It's very like third eye blind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were quite pop punky, sort of very, you know, not really sure what we were doing. Hence the jumper that John is wearing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we've got Chris and, and Matt on the right hand side. I'm not even sure they know they're in the photo. Uh, <laughs> They might not know how cameras work. <laughs> but this was the highest amount of effort we put in to a photo shoot at this point in our career. Yeah. I um, like the background that you chose with all the flowers and, and the green around. You know, other people, they go to all plants and... and yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but this I, is I, just... It's, it's a beautiful. Nice, nice English garden, yeah. I thought. Correct. Um, <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> nice English garden would be the like the name of this band. Yep. Nice English garden. That's so much. That's so much a better name than what we were called. <laughs> what were you called? We let the drummer choose the name, which is always a mistake. Um, Uh-oh. And I'm saying it like it was a bad time. It was a great time. Uh, we were called Vaguely <laughs> Twisted. <laughs> and, uh, the band. <laughs> I'd say the name is more embarrassing than the picture. <laughs> 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 but we would always get announced as vaguely twisted because people where I come from can't read. That's better. No, that's better. Yeah. You just lean into that. Oh, it's Italian. Vaguli. Yeah. Vaguli. Vaguli. 
Uh, he- Henning's in the chat, by the way. He's just written the word hi, which is the least amount of effort you... Well, that's that's one more letter than just... That's two more letters than zero. <laughs> it's above the bare minimum. Hey, yeah. Henning. Hey, um, Henning. Yeah, so um, bringing these photos in from you guys. Who wants to go next? Because I've got more, but um, I feel like we should mix it up a little bit. I want to see Dan's. Okay. Um, Dan, I'm do you want to go with, like, with number one? Yep. Okay, this might suddenly get massively huge. Yeah, there we go. Uh, You're embarrassed of this. No, wait, 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 wait until you see the tie. Okay, I'm, I'm trying desperately. This, okay. photo, this photo is entitled, Don't Judge the Tie. <laughs> that is correct. Because that's like the worst choice that I could make. Like, I, <laughs> My, yeah, you, can, can you see that? Oh, I didn't even like, see the tie. Yeah. <laughs> How can you miss that? That's because I was, I was trying like, to look, you know, just, just trying to get these photos done. But that is, you know, like Ralph Macchio <laughs> accidentally started playing guitar after Crossroads for real. Oh, really? I see a lot of Karate Kid there. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of Ralph Macchio. Yeah. I can't, I can't see Ralph Macchio energy yeah, here. A little bit of it, yeah. And actually, it was like a, a pretty good gig, and people were super happy with that. But so many people approached me right after that, like asking me, what is that around your neck? That is. <laughs> that's just, that's my, my general so rule of thumb yeah. is that guitarists don't, shouldn't be reminding themselves with their possessions that they own guitar. That's what the guitars are for. Like, yeah. You don't need, exactly. yeah. And how, you don't need how many, how many guitars can you show? You know, I'm, I'm already like right. playing one. I don't need them around my neck or <laughs> in front of my chest or in breast. And yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing. It was a pretty good gig. It was at the time when I was uh, in a band with a, a very good impersonator of a German singer, Weston Hagen. And, um, like the actual singer had retired during that time, and that impersonator was, you know, uh, starring a TV show. So he had a lot of exposure, and he was looking for for uh, people to to play in a band. And except for myself, everyone else was a professional musician. And I was like oh, shaking before the gig because you know they all knew what they were doing, and I didn't. That's a cool <laughs> gig. Yeah, it was a pretty steep learning curve at that time. My big question is, did you buy that tie or was it like a gift? Because that's like the sort of tie I would get on Christmas yeah. from like my mom. I'm, yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that my mom bought it for me. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that explains it. That's yeah. okay then. But yeah. let's give it a public service announcement now. If you have a guitar player in your family and you want to buy them something guitar related for a, an event, buy them a guitar. Or, <laughs> or a pedal. Or a pedal. Yeah, a pedal. No socks, no ties. Uh, I if have a, a follow-up buy- question. Do you still own that tie? Absolutely. Would you, would you wear <laughs> it, please? Would you wear it on the show? Sure. <laughs> I think you should wear it to the next like big music instrument. Nam, Nam 2022. Yeah. I want to yeah. see you in a, in just like this, a white button-up shirt. This time, <laughs> and you're gonna you have to dress it up a little bit more, like get a vest or something like that, and khakis, like pair it with khakis. <laughs> and just, just I think I think with a matching vest, it might even look cool then, because then you've yeah. got more of a contrast. But this way, yeah. it's like it's like a, a white canvas, and you have to spot that tie. That <laughs> that tie cannot be unseen. I like the way you're tucking it into the shirt as well, as if it's been getting in the way of your low E string and and annoying you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's overall it a actually really did. bad choice. It, it, it actually did. So that was the reason why I just tuck it in. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for the tie. That was D a guitar kick. in the chat says that Dan and Stevie T were separated at birth. Ouch. No way. No way. <laughs> Ouch. That, that, that hurts my feelings. Yeah, that's not kind. That is no. un- uh, Henning's trying to join the party by saying he has an old newspaper clip with his first band at a pick of a live show. Should I send that to Andy? What do we think, guys? Yeah, sure. I think so. One of my favorite things about going to, to Henning's house for uh, for Gear Street was uh, seeing all the pictures of young <laughs> Henning in his mom's house. <laughs> yeah. Where he's got like a whole head of hair and stuff like one that. One in the <laughs> toilet. The one in the toilet by the front door. That's the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know the one. He's looking all cool, like, oh, I'm a young punk rock guy. Okay, Henning. <laughs> um, well, 
I think Me? that the guy that said that Dan looks like Stevie T, he also sent a photo. So I think it's time we saw that one before we move on to Ryan, because it, right. it is pretty classic. <laughs> it is a hat and the singer of the band using the whammy bar for him because he obviously can't. <laughs> he needs a little help. Uh... <laughs> and he looks oh, a lot boy. like Robert De Niro there. Yeah, I was say that. I was gonna say he's got De Niro face going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do De Niro face. I love that like Mika from the Muppets. But... <laughs> I can't do it. Then I look like someone from Planet of the Apes. The facial hair gets in the way of it. Yeah, but good energy. I like the energy. It's. A, yeah, I think yeah. it's a brilliant photo. Is there's a lot going on? The singer is really, really. Yeah. What do you guys think about hats? I think it's easy to be embarrassed of hat choices when you stop wearing that hat. Like in the future, like, oh, that hat. I can't believe I used to wear that hat. I'm not a hat wearer myself, so I don't have that problem. Like I wear like a garden hat when I'm in the yard, but I don't wear hats. Mm -hmm. Like, is this an embarrassing hat? I don't know. No. I don't think it is. I think, I think he's rocking that hat. Yeah. I think it fits him. I think it fits him. If 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 that was like on like a teenage kid, I'd be like, come on, with the hat. Get rid of the yeah. hat. Yeah. Like yeah. you're a teenager, you don't need a hat. But I think it, I think it fits his, his whole vibe here. Yeah. Well, he says that he hated the hat. Why did you wear it then? <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs> Just get rid was of it. it. Was it a band requirement? Crowd. <laughs> <laughs> a band requirement. You must wear a crap hat. <laughs> All right. I think um, a lot of like we're like, oh, I'm gonna have a show. Aren't I supposed to like dress up or something like that? So we <laughs> add that we normally would where and you make weird decisions and you, if you go too far you end up looking like uh like uh johnny depp or something like that like too many hats too many bracelets too many scarves like pull it back a bit okay. um all right you know when someone takes a photo and sends it to you it, mm -hmm. like heading just has yeah he's just taken the worst photo of a photo i've ever seen <laughs> to a link, do not click the link. Henning is trying to trick you if you send. No, I can link. see the photo already. It's it's Henning. Can you send it's another version, please? Because it you've just sort of half-assed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I want to see it. If you're going to just tease it like that, I well, I'm going to show you the photo. But I want I want uh, a a real. Do you want to see the version that Henning sent me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on then. Um, he's, he's sending me the most in in op, I and I'm looking at it. It's getting worse. <laughs> Come on, share it with the guys. Desktop. Right. Really got to describe this photo for the audio listeners. Sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Paper clicking. Good thing. That's it, it is. is but that... I, I've cropped it. It was like you know worse than this. So Henning, I'm seeing Henning on stage right, so our left. Singer at the middle, drummer at the back, of course, and then what could be a bass on stage left. Is, Henning has his is, shirt this, open. Yeah. I see <laughs> the date written on the newspaper clipping to know like, oh, this is like mid nineties. Yeah. Ninety five. Yeah. Let's bring it, it up. Says, there big he rock is. Party. Uh, the, What's that? Storyteller. The the Weilberger group storyteller is um I don't know why I'm trying yeah, to this we've got Dan the German here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's 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 funny because under below the, the image it says something that's a little bit sad because they, they state the the, the the music group from Weilborg called Storyteller are on stage tomorrow in Waldhausen two. So it's like not they are on stage. It's oh. they are on stage too. Also as well as, as well. well. Yeah, in also a, with others amongst others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it looks a lot like this was Henning's vibe phase with with the long hair and the open shirt yeah. and the fancy guitars. It's an Ibanez universe, apparently. Is it? Apparently, that's what he's written written in the chat. Huh. Oh, well, I think that's a great photo, is... one that I've not seen of it Henning is. before, and. I'm a little bit sad he doesn't look like that anymore. Is one yeah. of the bands at the very top it has a list of the bands. One of the bands is just called Weird. 
Stocks, Stoics, Weird, Storyteller, and Fawn Tears. Oh, I really want to hear Fawn Tears. Yeah, I got to hear Fawn Tears right name. now. <laughs> Imagine just like, oh, we're just going to call this band Weird. That's our name. All right. <laughs> I think, I think no, my band Vaguely look- Twisted should have toured with them. Totally <laughs> 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 twisted. <laughs> totally twi- yeah I'm, I'm just on spotify seeing if there is um any band called fawn tears and if so <laughs> good luck searching for weird band <laughs> can, can we can we agree that henning's look was was pretty good at that time yes that was spot, yeah. spot on rockstar look he, yeah the whole band looks straight out of like that uh what was the brendan fraser movie with adam sandler airheads uh, airheads it looks yeah. straight out of Airheads, right? Yeah, 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 agreed. I believe we've got a Hughes and Kettner amp on a Marshall 4x12, and there's the mother of all monitor speakers at the front. <laughs> <laughs> and some excellent park hands. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, those park hands were old when that photo was taken. <laughs> you know what? It, you know, the light is about the same, but the, the new cans these days, you just don't get the heat off of them that you get off yeah. of the old <laughs> If you're not burning, warm, you're not earning. Yeah, warm, warm up the room. <laughs> don't put it. Steve has a guitar case, a, ba- a bass case that he like leaned against a, one of those old cans and it has a melted spot in it. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boy. I was That's playing... a mistake you only do once. I was playing I a show where we the put snow. them on the floor in, in Vaguely Twisted, the band that you all know and love. And uh, mm-hmm. some Vaguely drunk twisted. guy fell over and his face landed on the parkan and he had the grill, the, the, the grill of the gel in his face. And he was oh. totally fine with it. Totally fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Remind, it reminds me of Home Alone. <laughs> Exa- yeah, it was like Home Alone. <laughs> Ryan, I want to go for Ryan. Do you want to go yeah. um, old school Backstreet's Back, or do you want to go more modern first? Let's start with the old stuff first. I'm so glad you said that. I think that's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's the guitar player to Andy's band. The first <laughs> image we saw. <laughs> that's the lead guitar player. <laughs> so I still, I still have that guitar. It's uh, is it behind me? It's that that green Strat that I have. <laughs> I refinished that guitar. Oh wow, that's yeah. that one. Oh, but what about that hat, Ryan? More importantly, you said you weren't a hat wearer. <laughs> this was one of our first gigs, and we cooked up this idea. Like, we don't know what to wear. We don't want to just do t-shirts and jeans and like just be look like regular guys. We wanted to do like a show. Like, let's just do all white. And so all we right. found those. We found these painters' hats, and it's like, let's do hats. And it was the only <laughs> show we did the hats. So we're like, we're never doing hats again. <laughs> but then we kept the white thing forever, and we like evolved it and had shirts and ties and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the hats were a bad idea. Especially on stage, it gets so hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What we is got written on hat. your guitar strap? Uh oh, albino. <laughs> <laughs> which is what kids in, in the neighborhood used to call me when I was a kid and so it's like it'd be funny to put that on a guitar strap <laughs> your ch- childhood awesome. nickname was albino I think I finally got rid of that strap like a, a month or two ago I still had it around <laughs> <That is laughs> so, uh, albino, and it, it sounds really cruel and mean but I was just happy that they were talking to me so yeah, I think that's such a cool name in retrospect. You know, it's it's not it's not it very is, nice at all. But it's not nice, but it is it is true. I'm very close to being an albino. <laughs> what oh, what wow. is going on with the facial just, expression? Why why that choice of muscles? So this band, the band was called Your Favorite Band. Uh, <laughs> we we were fully dedicated <laughs> to being as ridiculous and cringy and stupid as we possibly could be. Yeah. on stage like we were trying to like give this ridiculous experience and so there's a lot of like really animated movements and awkward poses and bizarre facial expressions in photos of us because we we're just being bonkers the whole time we're on stage just constant movement constant not trying to ever be cool 
just being weird and hyper like throughout <laughs> like a 20 minute set that it would take me like three days to heal from because it would just wreck <laughs> off. Ryan, we have a request from RT Smudge in the chat. Can you please pull that face? <laughs> Let's on, see let... if I can other way that I don't know. face face yeah, your face. other your left side a little bit. Is it left? Yeah. There we go. Now look at look at off in the distance as if you're trying to forget this moment forever. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, man, I never it. shaved that beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I am forbidden. My wife won't allow it, and I, I'm happy to keep it. So. <laughs> I, I mean, me the, that with the utmost respect. What I'm saying is, beard looks good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> no, the fear definitely definitely helps me out. <laughs> oh, um, there, there are more of those styles of photos. Steve said in the chat that he thinks your drummer threw his hat into the crowd during that show. He probably did. We lost the hats really quick. They were, it, it, they were a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I mean, where do we want to go next? And any requests? Your turn. My turn. Okay. One of the ones that has Steve in it. They're coming. Do, do you want? Do you want to see a Steve one? Let's do. Let's okay. Do no. Yeah. No. You, you do what you were going to do. I didn't. I thought you were done with with. No. I, okay, I you're desperately. Doing... I'm. I'm just saving them. I. I, I want to save them because they're glorious. Right. <laughs> My, mine are somewhat <laughs> pale by by comparison. Um. We've got lots of me, off stage. Mainly because I've moved to a different country and called my mum a few days ago and asked for her to do some photos and, and um, you know, technology. Right, um, right. Sounds like I'm blaming my mum there, but uh, it's not the case. Um, do you want? Uh, do you want to see? Uh, do you want to see the next photo in that garden photo shoot? Yeah, yeah please. This is me. <laughs> this is me taking weird lead singer to the next level. Um, come on, Andrew. Of course, it's not. It's suddenly not working. Um, so. Bring back the newspaper clipping of Henning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OBS is having a little fit. Um, excuse me. Oh, it's because I've still got your Backstreet's Back photo lined up. It thinks I'm trying to drag. It thinks I'm trying to combine the photos. Hmm. Maybe you should try that. Maybe I should <laughs> join the two bands together. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. I've got to add that that way. Sorry about the smoothness. We uh, we don't pay for the software. Right, super huge. What sort of what do you think's going on with the other half of my body here? <laughs> Shirtless, pantsless. You're not going to guess. I mean, I'm in a sort of pump pock a neon neon green mesh shirt. That's the same clothes as before, but I'm doing this. Oh, <laughs> what's that like? <laughs> Just that normal like teenager pose that we all did. <laughs> I'm in a band. <laughs> <laughs> and I just re I've just remembered um, what my T-shirt says. My T-shirt says because it's super edgy. Pick it up, asshole. And there's Mr. White <laughs> and Mr. Pink. Wow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and I was not I allowed it. to wear this T-shirt at home. Oh. Like wherever you were is just so charming out in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Look how big that t shirt is. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when everything was baggy in the 90s? That's going to come back. Yeah. Every, every, it has was, to. We weren't buying shirts outside our normal size. Like that was probably an extra large. Then. It was. It absolutely it would, was. Yeah. It would be a, it would be like a 2XL or a 3XL now. Like they changed the sizes over time. So I, yeah, I wore all those shirts that were that big. We, we all just were trying to wear the baggiest clothes we could. We could. Those pants are honestly kind of too tight for the 90s. I know, but like, what, you know, um, me. <laughs> where's the Junkos is what I'm asking. But they were, I don't know what was going on with those, those jeans, but yeah, it's, it's just awful all around. There's just there's just nothing there's no redemption there at all. 
the jeans yeah. look like jeans from now. Like that's just what you would wear now because you're it's normal. Pretty close adult. to exactly what I'm wearing right now. I mean, not yeah, now. I, I'm, if not, I'd, I'm not wearing jeans, but you know, I'd, I'd... if they were Levi's, I'd guess they're like five oh fives or something like that. They're definitely not Levi's. They are oh something something cheap and I don't and... know what brands of jeans you have over there across the pond. Oh, we had them. Here... Just just I was spending money on like bass strings and shark shaped right, right. picks. They're not expensive here. Levi's are not a, like a premium expensive brand here. Like I can go get a pair of Levi's for like 20 30 bucks. Yep. In Europe it's different. It's very expensive. very different, sir. I had Unless enough of could. looking at that. I I can't look at that anymore. Yeah. Um <laughs> It's That's so, just an awkward photo. Yeah. I, I How did you to... end up in that pose? What's that? That's that weird, like stepping forward and I shaking your hands. I don't know. That's what's weird. You know, I mean, it was a long time ago. Okay. There's a I real think... like new rat holes energy to that. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know I was trying to, oh, it's a photo shoot and I'm the singer. So I, I need to be different. In most. Yeah. I need to give looking energy. at the, yeah, you know what it, it, I was I was about to say it 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 kind of conveys some sort of energy or some sort of mood like I'm I'm singing all the time like this manic street preachers uh, manic street preacher songs in my head like if you tolerate this na 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 and then those photos f perfect fit perfect fit thanks <laughs> you're welcome if only I knew then what I know now <laughs> okay <laughs> it's time for Dan. Time. Ah, I'm in the teenagers starting bands. Oh, yeah, we would murder it now with all absolutely. the knowledge that we have, absolutely. And knowing how, knowing how to actually look cool as like teenagers and looking back and knowing what's awkward and weird, like we would, we would, it, we would have too much power. The government would have to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a, a, a three letter agency, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'd be like superheroes. Uh, so how old are you in this, Dan? Make it's, a guess. It's hard for me to tell. It's like you could either be like a mature 16-year-old or like just a young-looking like 27-year-old in this photo. I, I cannot tell. 27 is pretty close. Without the beard, I'm, I look much younger. Mm. I, I was yeah. Like you filled out a little bit. There's, there's more facial muscle. You, you've lost the tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was just a little bit fatter than in the previous picture. I'm That's not calling like, you fat. I think you look you look pretty uh, buff there. Yeah, I think so. Is that a, some kind of saxophone behind you? Yep. He looks oh. at, he's got the same guitar committed to that Ibanez. Sorry? Say again. So you got the same guitar. You're committed to that Ibanez. New, yeah, that's my number one. New strap, no tie. Thanks, thanks for asking. That's an AT100 SB made in 1999. <laughs> 175 pieces made made in Japan. It was the first guitar that was developed in the newly built custom shop by Nick Sugimoto and his team. That's has, one hell of a guitar. Numbers. Has he finished listing off the Ibanez name yet? Is that all the I Ibanez model? All those numbers? <laughs> <laughs> it's he's got just, the coolest serial started. number. The actual real yeah, number is a Patreon Wait exclusive. for it. The serial is 07. 007. Oh, okay. It's got a license go. to play. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you pick that guitar because it had that serial? You saw it? Not, not, not at all. I was, I was uh, chasing that, that very specific type of guitar, that specific model for ages, and I found it in, in the Netherlands in the mid-2000s and, and bought it from there because I missed out in 1999, you know. 175 pieces worldwide is not a lot. No. But, um, oh. yeah. Lovely, like it's custom shop level, and right. still my number one. Yep. So, what about this photo is is awkward or bad for you? Because to me, you just look like like a cool guy. You look like hey, you got you're your killing it. <sighs> nah, I, I never, I never liked that. I, I was, I was kind of closing my eyes all the time on stage. It's like same here. If if I'm my like kind of you closed your eyes. Oh my gosh! Bring back my photo. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it was like, actually people people were were calling like like actually were were putting me on the spot. Like you gotta look at the audience. You gotta interact with the audience. You can't just stay there and try to play well without kind of you know right. interact with the guys. And that was kind of turning point because, like I said, all the others there were pros, and you know they were they were rocking the stage, and you know the bass player he would go up and down and back and forth and. 
go into the into the crowd and come back and you know, I was there a little shy guy that just tried to play well and not make any mistakes and yeah that's the background of, of I, that I, thing I, it looked as if I, 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 I would, I'd be happy sleeping. if that were me I mean I've created crimes yeah. on stage that that is something to be proud of Dan if I had a photo of me looking that handsome it would yeah. be on the wall <laughs> <laughs> oh well, well, well. I, I got wor I got worse images. So okay, well, we've got one from one of our, our viewers and listeners right now. It's Sarang. Oh, Sarang! There this you go, is Sarang. And he is very, very. There's so much going on in this photo. So Ryan, you're the podcast photo describer professional. Would you be <laughs> honest? I'm seeing a lot of accessories. I'm not. I'm not like an accessory guy. I'm seeing dog tags, a bracelet, uh, earbuds. Are those earbuds or something like that? Or are those earrings? I can't tell. I think it might be cotton wool because look at the size of those PA speakers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's got to be earplugs to protect him because he would die standing yeah. in front of all those speakers and a Marshall half stack back there. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I honestly like the the blue shoes, the blue laces with the mm -hmm. the blue heel. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm into. It. I'm into it. I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't see anything wrong with this. I, I think we all look at photos of ourselves and like, oh, oh so cr oh, cringy. Ugh, uh. He just looks like a, like, a, like a dude. He looks fine. Yeah. I think that's fine. There's, and I don't know what awkward. year it is. I mean, this, this is a fault I band he's playing in. 2009. <laughs> 2009. Sarang, would you let us yeah. know in the chat? what year yeah. this was taken um it's an mg series marshall at the back i'm pretty sure there looks uh -huh. to be like a ds1 on the floor and there was some kind of pod thing going on he mentioned uh so it's gotta be i, I think ryan's about right i'd go with that uh, you gotta so give kudos for him to kind of do all the pedal work stuff like right on the floor so that i think that must have taken 30 minutes to just put everything and you know, wire, wire it up so <laughs> I used to do that show up to, show up to a gig with yeah, like three loose yeah. pedals in a bag and like well i gotta set this up now yeah, yeah. <laughs> mine was literally in a carrier bag a shopping plastic bag but at some point we just it got a hole in it because the patch cables would which were the molded plastic ones would just push through the sides uh so like says it's from 2010 um, All right. And pay attention to that T-shirt. Wow, I got really close. I was why, one year early. Why pay attention to the T-shirt? I don't know, too. Is that like it's just a shirt of that era. It's, it's kind of got that kind of like affliction yeah. sort of thing going on, which is why I thought like 2009-ish is like that whole like affliction paired with the dog tags kind of look. Yeah. I, yeah. Thing. I would Nothing wrong about the picture. This. Nope. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go move on, but um, I'm gonna have to ask what was wrong with the, with the t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> now, this isn't a hint, Dan, but I've always kind of wanted one of those one of those <laughs> Ibanez guitars. <laughs> 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 one of those, the Vi guitars. Those always look fun to me, even though I don't play in that way at all. Uh, uh, they look, they're always a blast to pick up. <laughs> there is a there is a very interesting um, video available on YouTube from Premier Guitar. They modded a Gem Junior and they put like three effects into the yeah. into the um, the grip, the monkey grip. I saw that. And, I that was clever. Yeah, with the sixty cycle hum, they have a knob to kind of activate sixty cycle hum. Is that great? <laughs> Finally, you can turn it on instead of always trying to get rid of it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Andy. Um, What's next? Do you want do you want Ryan and Steve or Ryan, Steve and Drummer? Let's do uh me and Steve. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Already amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That looks like a like a theater performance. Like that's performing arts. Yeah, oh yeah, we were performing. So we would do this thing where Steve had like a solo or <laughs> bass solo, and my whole bit would be I would get right next to him and act like I was completely amazed and like go back and forth, <laughs> like looking at the audience, like, can you believe this? This is incredible. But it was just like him playing a, a normal bass part. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all very animated and ridiculous. I love the contrast in your expressions. Like, yeah. <laughs> understated and way over the top. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like teacher's pet on the one hand and American Psycho on the other one. <laughs> Steve looks like Dennis the Menace's dad. Yeah. <laughs> now that you're saying that, that's spot on. <laughs> but with white shirt and white pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Man, in this one, He's hilarious. Like- yeah, there's a, there's a sweatband situation with Steve that is somehow yeah. not doing the job that it's required to do. It's just sort of sitting <laughs> on his hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that expression, that facial expression, that's that's gold. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that is sick. Like, How many people were at that show, and what size was the venue? Me? That one, I don't know, but the, the first one that you showed photos of, uh, that was a huge show. We got put on this uh, the show that like this high school uh, like group was putting together at an all-ages venue, and we showed up not knowing anything about the event, and it turned out it was a fundraiser for like the, uh, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance. And so there were, <laughs> there were like, like 400 LGBTQ kids there. And it was like, okay, this is our this is our first show. This is fun. <laughs> Your first show, our very first show, wow. and it had nothing to do with us. It had to do with the fact that it was this big fundraiser thing, and we just happened to luck our way into it. And you know, every show we did after that had like twelve people at it. <laughs> <laughs> What's but uh... it was it was a venue that actually could hold that many people and uh that like a local venue that would actually host like touring bands like like uh orgy played there which is and like like uh um uh, shoot what's the band from la crap i can't believe i can't remember their name now uh Man, the one band from la with the guy who did the acoustic album where he Steve. covered johnny cash uh, uh, nine inch nails no no that's the other way around yeah. hang on uh, I can't believe I can't remember the name now. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter at this point. It does not matter. <laughs> well, I gotta say, for the, your f- very first performance with the band, I think it's it's kind of impressively, you know, outgoing, and your expression is kind of spot on. Like, oh yeah, I, I really, I really like that 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 contrast. And I always admired people that could completely let loose and just go wild and, and on stage, and you know, just. Uh, lose themselves in the moment i rarely had those moments when playing live it felt more like well, distortion was the band i was trying to remember wow social distortion would play there social okay. distortion. Yeah. wow okay so i was i was i fully knew that like we didn't have the chops to have music that anyone would actually care to listen to so it's like i just want to have fun and have a ridiculous stage show and like <laughs> make this like an experience like and so you know i was a hyper young guy is like, let's throw as much energy into this as we can and make much of a joke as we can. And it worked for us. Like we, Mm -hmm. we actually got kind of known locally, uh, like in like youth group sorts of stuff. Like we were playing for like a a lot of youth venues and things like that. And, uh, when my wife and I first started dating, like we'd be walking around town and like kids would run up to me and be like, (laughs) Oh, you're Ryan from your favorite band. Wow. And like, I had a slight amount of local fame. Wow. Among like, the fourteen and fifteen year olds in San Diego, <laughs> <laughs> we, That's cool. we would show up to like a show that like it's just kids. Like there'd be like you know, like fifty kids there. They've probably never been to a concert in their life, and we would do this ridiculous, over the top, high energy, like self destructive thing that they would never forget. Like the music was crap. It was it was just really loose, ridiculous punk rock. Uh, <laughs> But we would put on the show that, you know, I'm sure they still remember. I hope so anyways, because I, I hurt for three days after each one. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of these now adults ever contacted you? Like, it's like commented on a video or something? Or? I think it's a few that have randomly become like listeners or viewers of of the, the channel of 60 Cycle Hum. And then every now and then we'll be like, whoa, wait. Oh, you're that guy? <laughs> You're the guy that was in that band. I remember you vaguely, but not enough. 
I really remember. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's go to a, a viewer listener's photo, which frankly I don't think yes, is please. embarrassing, but um there's one thing missing, should we say? This is Valeria. And she appears to have forgotten her guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she's but still in the like chats. a solid A A major, right? Oh, she's only doing two fingers. I don't know. But there's she's in the chat. She's moderating the chat right now for us. Thank you very much. Um yeah. she might want to explain to us what's going on and maybe why there are two bass amps. <laughs> That's, what, that's my first question is like why do we have stacked heart keys here what is going on <laughs> <laughs> one is not enough we've got to double up <laughs> got her air, air base plugged in come on guys yeah. professionals ah. <laughs> so Valeria let us know there's a par can behind that bass player as well a I have a feeling I have a feeling this would be more embarrassing if it was a video because we'd be watching her like do like a like an awkward like air guitar thing in between swinging mm. parts, and that would be like, oh yeah, uh, that's a weird stage thing to do. Yeah, but the photo itself is fine. Like it looks fine. You know, it's great. It's. it's... I want to know if there actually is a guitar player in the band, or this this is actually the lineup. <laughs> And it's just bass drums and <laughs> vocals plus air, air guitar. Okay, Valeria <laughs> says there was it was a band contest and there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, I I I'm intrigued. I, I hope you be be <laughs> re ready for this, Valeria. But she uh, she's just sort of um, not responding at the moment. <laughs> she's too busy moderating your chat because there's people just posting awful things right now and she's like taking the band care of it. was called eight ball <laughs> was it really yeah she, she wrote that and yes there was that's a, a very, player. that's a very late 90s like mid 2000s name call your band eight ball yeah yeah but i think it might be younger than that, that? You remember that like conversation, like when you were young in that that time, like oh, we have to pick a band name, and the, the internet was still like pretty new, and you get on the internet, like oh, some other band already has that name, we can't pick that name because oh man, you yeah. know that you know it, it's already taken, it's already trademarked or something like that. No band any of us were playing in were ever going to have any legal disputes over our names. Like <laughs> come on, <laughs> like, and whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Every sells Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you say this, but I was in a band called Stone Pony, and that's a good band name. Thank you. And there was a band like the same night in the same town called Stone yes. Pony. No way. <laughs> that's how you know it's a good name. <laughs> Years after your favorite band broke up, I looked on the internet and there were like six other bands with the same name at that, at that point. Now there's actually a podcast called Your Favorite Band Sucks. And it's actually a really fun podcast. I, I recommend it. It's, it's two guys who like trash on uh, various music uh, artists and stuff like that. <laughs> that was, That's fun. I thought about buying one of their shirts. Hot warming. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Where are we going next? Um... Are we going? Is it my turn? Yeah, sure. I think so. Uh, <laughs> you want to see another? <laughs> this is a. This is um. Hang on, I've got more photo shoots because I, I didn't really get the the live. You want to see photo shoots before that photo shoot, so don't expect the high quality of the English Garden. Um, <laughs> and very low self esteem. So, uh, I'm trying to heavily compensate for something which you might recognize <laughs> when i managed to bring this photo on the screen as soon as i can and i'm filling audio while i do it here we go here we go that's the vibe yeah so um this was think oasis um, yeah oh wow yeah yeah i am very self-conscious this, this is a photo of a band that just recently watched Train Spotting, and now they feel, <laughs> <laughs> now they feel like they're ready to like write some darker material. Yeah, <laughs> I like the I like the folded arms, but the guy on the right didn't get the memo. 
Uh, <laughs> he, that's John the drummer. He never did get there. You go. Out. I think John's the still in the band, the- actually. <laughs> The guy in the front thinks he's the only one folding his arms. And when he sees the photo, he's like, really, guys? That was my thing. I'm the folding arms guy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's Matt. And Matt actually watches the show. He's going to really enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I've actually folded my arms whilst watching this. The only guy that's pulling off the folded arms is Chris in the middle, who somehow yeah. manages to look intimidating yet friendly. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting combination and then then i'm trying to push that bicep forward or that not that bicep but that part of skin <laughs> that part of flappy skin on the side of my arm i'm trying oh, to push it that forward old, with the knuckle that old trick <laughs> you know girl girl might see this photo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, yeah, I work out. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all natural. Also, I say that like, sorry. What I was saying earlier, we could go back to, back in time into our teenage selves and like run ourselves like like actual musicians should in bands. Like you had a a a, a look, young Andy. Like you could have been like you've got you've got music video potential with your look there. I think you've got like a. Yep. You've got like this, this uh, like burning intent in your gaze that would do very well in like a music video or something like that. Either that or cold turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's a film right there. Yeah. You know, we go back into our former selves. Not a film that anyone would watch, but certainly a film that I'd want to make. Oh, right. and, yeah. Uh, we do the whole CGI treatment. We take these photos and, and you know, we act ourselves with those white spots and green suits and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and we manage to look like a what was it like Robert De Niro in the in the Irishman? Uh, <laughs> you mean weird and plasticky? Weird and plastic. Oh Luke Luke in the Mandalorian. There we go. <laughs> um Yeah, there's a lot going on in that photo. That was the Forester's pub. I think that might even oh, wow. have been our first gig. And how old, how old were you in this? Sixteen ish. Wow. And they, wow. they be playing pubs when you're that age? Is that drinking yeah. age there? No, it's eighteen. We were not allowed in there. Um but we were allowed in there if we were the band. And our parents right. were with us, of course. So. <laughs> 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 also, I'm the only one not wearing a watch. I've just realized that. Well, we can't really. Oh, I guess we can tell. It might be further up your other arm. You don't care what time it is. You're the lead singer. You show up when you're ready. You know. There's a there's a slight <laughs> chance that I may be wearing a watch halfway up my arm, which is slightly thinner than my forearm, <laughs> the one you can't see, because that's something that I would have thought was cool. Yeah. I, I like see- how you I like how you push up your, your right biceps with your left hand. Yeah, yeah. See that. He's well, doing that. If, if you could see that left bicep, you wouldn't be laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were the kind of kid that like you didn't wear a watch because you tried to take a chance on like a on a big fashion move and you got yourself a pocket watch. You walked around. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are dangerously Maybe close. I'm Maybe I'm a pocket watch guy. Let's see. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, <laughs> you are so close because just before, like, year, two years before that, I was a waistcoat guy. <laughs> and I, I could have had, I could have had a pocket watch, but chose, chose. <laughs> <my coat>. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Um, don't, don't make any big fashion decisions. It's gonna be embarrassing. Just whatever you're like, just look whatever the cool kid is wearing in school is fine. Just wear whatever the cool kid's wearing is fine. Like. <laughs> Don't be the kid with a pocket watch, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Pockets are for things other than watches. There's a reason watch straps were invented. Um, right. Dan, can we go to you? Sure. I want to go to the band photo that you shared. That's, it's, you're a little younger, and you're looking like you could have been in a band with me. Um, All right. I don't me. want to give away your band name, because I know it, and uh, it's much more fun if you tell us. 
<laughs> oh my gosh yes yeah. oh this is so good <laughs> yeah that was the, the, the full pose mode <laughs> so i must i must must have been like 18 19 ish so that was right after i returned from like army kind of wow. you know we had that mandatory mandatory period where we have to go to the army or we had that back in the day and i was returning and had a couple months off before i was starting studies so we kind of founded that band that we were playing every day and that was like solid metal like slayer metallica like you know the the fast stuff <laughs> megadeth and, and those that kind of stuff and the sure. funny thing is guess the name what, what do you think would the name be oh, the, the, man. The, the scenery might give you some hint oh no i really call it quarry or something like that nope there's a rock pun in here nope yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're spot on. Yeah. What's the What's the rock pun? What's the name? Band's name was Rock Scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I'm assuming he's the singer. It looks like leather pants. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Some kind super, of no super tight. <laughs> some kind of novelty belt. It might be like a bullet belt or something it looks like that. Bullet belt to me. Yep, yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then a yeah. t-shirt of <laughs> are, you, are you still in contact with any of these people? Uh loosely, yeah. Actually, they they share some interesting story. Actually, the guy on the right that has a funny look at that V guitar, he um he kind of followed a career as a professional bass player and now lives in New York. Nope, I'm wrong. He moved from New York to LA. So now he's in LA. Then the guy who's standing like behind me they can barely see he's an it guy and uh the singer actually is a chemist uh, a chemist who is a doctor and kind of works i think for pharmacy company or something so yeah <laughs> you gotta send this photo to his co-workers yeah <laughs> <laughs> we have some alternative band name suggestions all right he'll suggest rock bottom rock bottom nice <laughs> and amanda <laughs> suggesting gravel eater <laughs> oh my god <laughs> now the pants on the guy on the right those are the pants that i wore like yeah 1994 to like 2002 or whatever <laughs> 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 that was my look. like that whole thing was my look <laughs> it's got oh your names gosh. on the bottom so you got daniel who is clopper that's an amazing that's name. a guy right right behind me uh, yeah is that, that a or is that a stage name that's Clopper. a stage name, Clopper. Oh, good. And is he the drummer? <laughs> no, no, no. He was the bass player. Yeah, then we had CK, which sounds like an artist name already. Yeah. Yeah. Which was basically just his initials. Then Basti and Kai. Kai in the red tank top. That's Basti. Oh, Basti. Oh. Basti. Yeah. I was going to say, he looks like a CK. But... No. <laughs> Apparently, he's not. <laughs> he looks like. Yeah, yeah, um... yeah. Christian, the actor, what's his name from Heather's? Oh, yeah. No, he definitely has that like mid 90s, like, like, like dude in a teen movie look. Yeah, agreed. That was a fun band. I never played heavy, heavy music like that ever again. I just noticed your sleeveless shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's so much going on that I it didn't hit until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Showing off those guns. Yeah, you, you probably didn't see that because the the strap is over that, but it had a a kind of snake embroidered on the on the left oh, side of, yeah. of the breast part. So that was like all the way metal, as as black album as it could be, you know. <laughs> oh boy! Oh so, my gosh! And the hiking <laughs> rock scratcher, rock scratcher. There you go. A piece of metal history. <laughs> rock scratcher. Like. <laughs> I should start a service for hire where I help like coach bands on their mm -hmm. name. Like, oh, you have a band name? Like, hire me like for a, a small consultant fee, and I'll tell you if you if it sucks or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that name sucks. Try again. <laughs> that will that will be the extent of my service. <laughs> Would it be does my band no, name suck no. com? There you go. Yeah. There you go. I wonder if that exists. Go ahead and steal that, Andy. You do the work. I don't want to. That's my band name. <laughs> I want to see if it already exists. It just... 
You know what would be? Uh, it doesn't you should exist. just subreddit or something. You know what would be funny if you type in your name and it always states, "That's a bad choice. Call your band Aerosmith." <laughs> <laughs> I love to see that. I'm in. All right, where are we going now? We're going back to Ryan. We have a, we have a few more, so we're gonna be live for another, I would say, twenty minutes. Um, just milking this okay. dead pony until till it really dies. <laughs> um, is that where you come from over there in Europe? Dead ponies. Yeah, that's where we get milk from. That's our main sustenance. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Dead pony so, milk. Dead pur- pony purple cows. Dead pony milk. Start that band what right now. The... <laughs> See, now I know so the this story is a, this behind is this fun. band. It's It makes sense. <laughs> I still have that guitar. It's in a case somewhere. It's a, it's a Fender Lead 2 <laughs> copy. Wow. it's not even a real lead too the fun thing about this band too is that 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 bass drum would light up we hooked it up to oh. like, <laughs> of course this is. is whole dangerous thing i wrote up i the the drum pedal i cut up an extension cord and i did this rigging underneath where the like it would connect like a spring to a metal washer to complete the circuit and it would turn christmas lights on and off in that drum light <laughs> <laughs> The drum pedal would throw sparks, and I was personally electrocuted by it. But <laughs> at least the, time, the drummer would get electrocuted about every other gig, like a full kick <laughs> from the wall to set this dumb light pedal up. And there would be people would be like, "You know, there's a way to set that up. There's a way to like make a circuit where it won't electrocute you anymore." It's like, "Shut up! This is rock and roll. <laughs> Leave me alone." <laughs> But this this is an interesting gig. This was uh, played at the local college that Steve went to. Actually, a big university, uh, UCSD. And uh, this was the auditions to play their big outdoor festival. Like okay. they would they would hold auditions so like a student band could could open the show. And so we went and did the audition in the middle of the day in like the food court area of the university. And, uh, you know, it's like one of those things where like there's maybe like 40 people watching while they're having their lunch and then like a, a fold out table with like two judges watching. It's like just talking <laughs> and everything. And we won. We won this wow. thing. Congrats. We got to play this festival where we we opened the the festival at like three o'clock in the afternoon, which means we were really opening for My Chemical Romance and Cypress Hill who happened to play at about like nine and 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) (laughs) That was insane. Wow. We did get to hang out in the green room with all these bands and it was, it was pretty amazing. That is cool. That is again, another nice facial expression. (laughs) (laughs) I've brought glasses into this one because it was sunny outside. Yeah. 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 Notice the symbols on too. That was one of our things is like during that time, there were all these emo bands and screamo bands and stuff. And the trend was to have the symbols like as low as you could get them. We we're like, nah, we're going to put them all the way up. That was the highest those stands could be extended because that was <laughs> the joke that we were doing. Apparently <laughs> that was like a joke to us is to put the symbols high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love, I love the thoughts and the effort that goes into these tiny little things that we think are the most important parts of our bands. <laughs> When we're at this stage, yeah, it's just those, oh, we're those not small bands. We put the symbols up high. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I feel wow. you guys are one step away from you and Steve wearing the symbols on your heads. <laughs> <laughs> the fun thing about this gig too, about this this audition, is like the parking was like a mile away and you had to walk all the way through the college campus to load in your gear. <laughs> we were walking all the way through the college campus dressed like this, hauling amps and guitars and drums and stuff. Wow. Like it took like six tricks trips to get everything there. And like everyone at the school who has no idea what, what's going on is looking at us like, who are these assholes? What is- <laughs> <laughs> also like the fine detail of the only handicap parking right behind the drummer. <laughs> No, they put that up for us. They could tell what was going on. 
<laughs> oh my god oh, wow wow uh, fun times i'll never have that much energy again for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> if someone told me like hey you can go play this go do this audition and you might get be able to play this big outdoor festival yeah. i'd be like what time of day i have to walk how far <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get some more of ryan here for no reason other than i want to show them <laughs> uh, oh it's got the same bass drum there we go there's a link oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i named this file like ryan cartman now I had, <laughs> thank you for bringing it up i had started to put on weight at this stage of the day. Yeah, you can tell <laughs> i was starting to get a little bit thicker uh, I had an office job. I wasn't getting out very much, and it, but I still had the band, and I was eating a lot of fast food, and I was starting to get a little thick in the rump. It's it's more the face than I, now. I'm seeing the, the rest of, of what's going on, but yeah, <laughs> the face is getting thick too. We have video of the last gig we ever played with this band, and I was I was I was a hefty boy, heftier than I am now. Anyways, what, what's what's on, what's written on the shard? It's a shirt. Okay. <laughs> Referencing what I was just talking about. It's a shirt for a hamburger place. <laughs> <laughs> I love hamburgers. Right. I still love hamburgers a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you we want were, proof? I give you proof. Take a look at that t-shirt. <laughs> we're white at this point. I think we were just like, ah, we're done. We're just done with it. All right. I think this was probably like the year that we quit. We would just okay. gave up on wearing costumes and stuff. Yeah, is, is it, who's the guy on the left? Is that like, is he part of the audience or is that yeah, like an audience? I think th right. this was he a youth, like a. <laughs> 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 yeah, I picked this photo just because it has an actual person in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> this was at like a church youth group show or All something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was know. wondering, could have could have been the bass player already like uh, packing together his <laughs> stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, time to go. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing in this one another guitar i still have all right yeah what, what, by the way where, where the guitar stories podcast what was your first proper guitar was that 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 lead to copy or uh no uh well the first guitar i had was a, a honer acoustic that was like a hand-me-down from my mom mm -hmm. uh my first electric was this hamer a uh, slammer series guitar with a really bad floyd rose copy on it uh, and it was a, it, it was a, a humbucker single humbucker guitar in HSH. Mm. Uh, and so that was my first guitar as an electric player. And I, I learned a lot. I, you probably wouldn't expect that someone like me would start out with like a Floyd Rose shreddy shreddy thing. Not at all. 24 frets, the whole deal. Nice. Mm. Yeah. And I, I it, it was like translucent green, a dark <laughs> And I ended up like doing so many modding projects to that, like refinishing it multiple times, stripping it down to bare wood, doing every single like coil cut and like out of phase thing that I could figure out to do on it. Like I just experimented with that guitar. And I think that was like a good start for me, just having mm -hmm. it kind of like wide open as far as options go to be able to like tweak things and take it apart and try different mm -hmm. things. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. Cool. Uh, Steve is saying something to correct some information that the outdoor photos were from a church skate park. Oh, is that what was that? Oh, okay. And he doesn't want huh. to be well, it was, that guy. It wasn't <laughs> it was around the same time, though. Of course. I wonder if the, of course. He, might, he might be right. He might be right. It, to me, that looks like the college, but he might be right on that one. I'd like to know, Ryan, where this photo is from. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, were you in a pirate tribute band? <laughs> I don't know what venue that is. It was, it was, it was, it was pretty early on. It was pretty early on. <laughs> We've lost that. Uh, either, either the pirate tribute band, or, <laughs> or he's having a stroke on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, oh my gosh. Let's, let's see what else is going on with this photo. Bring it up. <laughs> grow a beard then. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, grow a beard earlier. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, you, grow a beard. You need it. You are you are beard. Less hair on top, more top, more hair on your face. Like, yeah. I like the strap. It's it's very emo. I, I still have that strap. Classic strap. Oh, wow, okay. I'm looking at it right now. 
yeah. yeah. Got some emo vibes to it, definitely. Hmm. I was going more for like a ska thing, but okay. <laughs> yeah, well. Fair yeah. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't a ska band, but you know, I like checkers. Let's um, <laughs> let's see if we can get something else going on with. Uh, I'm gonna. It takes a while for me to load up my photos for some reason, but Dan's are very easy to get to. <laughs> Probably because um, you have like just like 4K like maximum megapixel photos of yourself because you care so much. You're just course. like, yeah, I could catch every pixel, every That's pixel like, of this. If I'm gonna scan them in with my phone, I'm gonna take good care. Uh, <laughs> I should say that Dan has named this himself, and it's called Porn Star Looks. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not name that folder. Um, yeah. I was like at the base pair, the chick in the back, Angela. She was, she was like, you know what? We gotta be, we gotta look cooler on stage. So why don't we wear those, those big ass sunglasses? You know, completely mirrored and aviators. It's just like, yeah, have you, aviators. Have you ever played anything but an Ibanez? Is what I'm wondering now. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but would I, would I pick that for the show? Uh, <laughs> probably not <laughs> no funny side story in in that very band um i was i was actually forced you know I, i'm an ibis guy since since you know age seven or so so right. um but at that time ibis was not having any piezo equipped guitars so i mm -hmm. actually had to play a jp6 music man guitar because that was the only like a for affordable instrument like for mere mortals not custom shop wise that you could get hold of and, and kind of play and you had the option to kind of flick between like clean acoustic tones and yeah. then rock tones. So that was my my like pr probably the main X during that time. But you know, my the other axes were all Ibanez. And that, yeah. that PGM 100 is one of the few guitars that I still regret selling uh, because it was one of the originals and it played like butter. Uh, oh, the, no. the action was, you couldn't like put a piece of paper in between strings and the fretboard. And to me, this looks like there's nothing embarrassing about this. This is a cool looking photo. Like if this was a little bigger, it could be a full spread in a magazine, and you, there'd be like a, <laughs> there'd be you like so? information yeah. about like what, like what rack unit you're using or something yeah. like that. <laughs> what the, like? These guys, the, the Bradshaw rack. rig. <laughs> Here's the rack. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah i never felt that cool to be wearing like big ass uh sunglasses on stage and stuff like that i just wanted to get lost in the music and they, you know yeah. want to want to be a performer pretty much like the antithesis to what you were you just wanted to you know rock the stage and do your thing and you didn't care about the music and i was more like okay make it as <laughs> make it as close to the actual record as i can and you know right so that's quite the 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 opposite but anyways oh, we were we were spot on with the recordings. We were spot on with replicating the sound of, of our recorded music. It just sucked. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> we're authentically crap. I love it. <laughs> That's a nice band name. Authentically yeah, crap. There you go. Yeah, and then people know what to expect. Yeah. Okay, I have the next one on the list of me actually on stage performing, um, being very professional. Yes. Here it comes. <laughs> this is That's the, the same venue. Yeah, the same venue. This is the part of the show where I put the guitar down and decide just to sing with a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst the keyboard player takes up the guitar oh, roll. <laughs> I like the cable in the background. Yeah. I've never noticed that cable until this evening. I like the fact that it appears to be going nowhere. Yeah. It's, it, well, it, it's probably connected to the satellite on the roof. <laughs> that, that venue probably wheels out like a, proge a progression, like a uh, projection TV to play sports on when you're not <laughs> having bands there. Any any guesses what song you were singing? I know exactly which song I was singing. I was singing Place Your Hands by Reef. Wow. Because that was the only song in which I couldn't play the riff and sing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, not the only song, but the only song that we played that I couldn't do that in. <laughs> oh, wow. What we're missing uh, here is the drummer, has, the drummer has seven toms. Wow. Oh <laughs> or, Let's say six and or seven. Yeah, right. one of them, right? 
<laughs> the smallest was was like ridiculously small. Yeah. Um, also, oh, okay. I need I was... to bring attention to our light show, which is the police yeah. blue light on the bass amp. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Special effects. Oh, no. And it was called Tony because the bass player from one of the dad's band was a policeman who was called Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so when would you flick that on like whenever would you use that um i think it's on there but it was so underpowered that you never saw it ah right i think like whenever you you would you know start with the chorus then someone would just you know switch that on i love the little plastic uh oscillating fan back there too for yeah. the drum. <laughs> i'm gonna get really hot playing drums i need a fan let's get this yeah. And we can find. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! You are so in, into the moment, Andy. It's a great picture. I was. I was there. These are the gigs where I would wake up the next day and I would be spitting blood from my throat because I would have wrecked yeah. my my uh, vocal cords the night before. Well, you could have been <laughs> in your favorite band with me because that's the experience I would have. I would always like joke like, ah, is I didn't really have a show if I don't taste blood in my mouth. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the same person. Yeah, You're like weird. <laughs> You're all white. You got blood in your mouth. You were probably much better at making music, though. You probably would have heard us play and been like, uh, yeah, no thanks. I'm pretty <laughs> sure looking at your face on those photos, I would have absolutely hated you at, if oh, I was yeah. playing. Uh, I, I think we never would have got on. And, and there were yes, that would just look at us like, what are these assholes doing? Why aren't they taking this seriously? <laughs> In hindsight, I envy you dearly. <laughs> yeah. No, in hindsight, I think we we made the right decision. We used our youthful energy in the yeah. correct direction. We had the fun that we could have at that time. And it, <laughs> it was a big joke on everyone else, and we we had a great time. So yeah. Yeah. I'm um, glad that we were sincere. I'm glad that we weren't being embarrassingly sincere at that point in our life. You know, yeah. would it be it embarrassing be. now to be doing those things at at the age of 39 and quite a lot? I could not I could not do that band again. Like Steve wants to do like a reunion show someday. I'm like, I can't, I cannot. I could not do that. I couldn't sing. I couldn't like move around and like move my body that way. That's all over. I don't have the I don't have the youthful energy anymore. And if I did, I don't care enough <laughs> to do anything like that. <laughs> good point. <laughs> <laughs> and the music isn't good enough to play again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's go for Ryan's more recent outfit. All right. Yeah. Um, do you want to go black and white or the blue colored one first, Ryan? Uh, do the blue colored one. Okay. There you go. It's nice and small. So I've got, well, I, we haven't played in years, but this was my last active band. It's called Dinosaur Ghost. And we would wear these masks. <laughs> we would wear dinosaur skulls on our head. Uh, I love a gimmick. <laughs> uh, it was a ton of fun. Uh, I still can't believe that I was able to get all these guys to be in the band with me and do this <laughs> ridiculous stuff. Uh, but it was it was a really fantastic band to be part of. This is this is an instrumental surf band, and that's actually really common for there to be gimmicks and kind of like themes and stuff like that and costuming in that whole scene. So this isn't unusual at all. This is way more usual than the other stuff that I've done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like anyone going to a surf show would walk in and see this if if they've been to other surf shows and be like, oh okay, I like that shtick. It wouldn't be like, what? I've never seen a band right. dressed up like that before. It'd be like, oh, these guys are dressed up like that versus the band I saw last week. There's a there's a band called Mashuga Beach Party, and they dress up like rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, what guitar were you playing at that time? That looks like a, a quirky little guitar. Like it's pick a up. Hallmark Sweat Wing, which is over my shoulder right there. All right. I can, can I move the right way? There it yeah, is. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! 
It's kind of a Mosrite style thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Who, when, who when is did, behind when did you? you? Sorry, Dan. Uh, that's the drummer that his mask is flipped up a little bit. <laughs> and then I've got uh, my second lead guitarist and the bassist in there, Ariel and Mitch. I made Mitch, those masks too. Those you made, are, I, I was about to ask, where did you get those? You don't go into Target and, and, and ask someone, you know what? I'm looking for some dinosaur, uh, dinosaur those masks. Made, those are made out of chicken wire and spray insulation foam that I like carved. And then I coated them with like a, a plastic resin and painted them white. And they're all mounted to, um, they're all mounted to like a welder's mask uh, clamp that uh, would go on your hand. Wow. That's, that's, that's I spent a lot of clever. time. I spent oh. a lot of time on these things. <laughs> a lot of effort you, you actually put into the gimmicks. Yeah. I did. I did. I spent a lot of time thinking about those masks and like doing a, the a surf Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> imagine what could have been if you had you continued this and, and where where the costumes would be at now you know well, it's, well this is the second version of those masks the first version were made out of uh duct tape and chicken wire but the same okay. the same welding mask rig that was consistent and then i ended up with a third version that was lighter than these uh the, dr the drummer moved and i was like you've got to take your mask with you i can't keep your mask so i made a third version after he left I mean, a, was, Mark uh, a Mark III. A Mark III. Stark. Just like Tony Stark. Yeah. I made the Mark III. I have them in the garage here somewhere. I wonder if I could find one. Wow. <laughs> We're getting a, a live dinosaur ghost. Isn't that amazing? I mean, yeah. It, other brands like Ghost made a career out of that gimmick. Yeah. I've... <laughs> oh, there it is. Wow. So this is one of the Mark III's. It's, it's a lot lighter. Uh, it's made out of melted grocery bags over like a plastic chicken wire. <laughs> and the, the teeth are made out of uh, uh, hot glue. That's mental. That's so great. You, you, they, you do have to put that on your head. They do. Well, I'm wearing headphones right now, so it's a little tricky. But, <laughs> but they're just a lot of fun. They, like, they flop around when you're on stage and you're playing and stuff. It's very theatric and like it's it's kind of neat because the you know your favorite band was all about like eye contact and like being ridiculous uh, and wearing a mask completely covers your face no one can see your facial expressions anymore so it becomes like, like this puppet experience like it's very jim henson jim henson -y, where it's like your eye just catches this skull that's moving around and like gazing at you the way like a dinosaur would yeah yeah that's cool I'm not embarrassed of any of these photos. You shouldn't be. That, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not embarrassed of the old stuff too. Like, I, but like, I'm especially not embarrassed of the dinosaur ghost stuff. Like, it's quirky, it's weird, and it's it's a bunch of fun. You know. That's the same strat that that I, that I, <laughs> I refinished that thing like four times. <laughs> I, I that's this sparkly thing. I definitely want to this hear some dinosaur ghosts someday. Somebody asked in the chat um, if you were ever to do the reunion show, would you shave your beard? <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not worth it. <laughs> I might grow my hair out longer, though, and get that shag. <gasps> and start eating cheeseburgers again. And start eating. Oh, I got, I got stopped eating cheeseburgers. I've never stopped eating cheeseburgers. I'm probably going to have one for lunch today. <laughs> it's for the show. This is for the show. I have to put on weight. I have to get in peak physical condition. <laughs> I, I've got some peak. Sorry, I just heard peak physical condition. <laughs> Imagine you're doing a photo shoot backstage because we're, we're getting to the end now. I think we've seen all of Ryan's. We've got one left to Dan. I'm going to pop over to myself. What kind of poses would you expect to see in a backstage band shoot? um of the band you've seen today vaguely twisted what sort of poses are you are you hoping for or what sensible poses i'm, I'm imagining just a lot of like like pouring mountain dew into like a red cup <laughs> and like like eating pretzels or something like that like i'm not mad i'm imagining just like backstage is just like teenagers hanging out at a party but i have a feeling you're gonna have something like very posed and very awkward well 
Dan, what, what's what, what do you uh, what do you think? You know, of all the choices I could have made, if someone says let's take some band photos, are you with Brian? <laughs> good, is it is it going to be? Good question. Well, it wouldn't have been Mountain Dew and pretzels if we didn't have that. It would have been cider and moldy bread. Oh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to <laughs> to decide. Okay, then I will just show sure. you. Oh, no way. <laughs> I decided to hang from the rafters while the rest of the band just stood around me and the drummer took the photo <laughs> because we didn't realize the drummer should have been in the photo. <laughs> That's but, when he found out he wasn't in the band anymore. It's like, thanks for taking the pictures. Oh, yeah, you're out of the band. <laughs> but the crossed arms motif has remained. Oh, my God. Gosh, this is these are the things teenagers do. Like I've got to do something in this picture. I'm gonna hang. That'll be cool, right? What was I thinking? But it's also my it's feet are almost bad. still on the floor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's that tall. He's that tall. I, oh, I was wondering, did, were you were you were you using any kind of eye makeup at that time? No, people ask me that a lot. And when yeah. I say when I say ask me, they used to punch me in the face a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, and I, I get asked a lot, and, and my daughter has the same affliction. But you know, happily, it suits her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, look, People, the, that's I mean, all me, what baby. Happened? What happened? Yeah, you your immediate silver chair vibe. Sorry. I don't know what I was doing. There's another one of this same photo session where we're posing <laughs> wistfully with a piano. And uh, <laughs> I don't know where that photo went. I don't know where that went. So. Um, <laughs> teenagers taking themselves seriously. Is there anything more awkward? I did actually find the first ever photo of me playing guitar when I didn't actually play guitar. And I would like to share that with you. Yes. Here we go. Um, oh, it's, I have to add it in this funny way. Let's just look at Ryan for a second while I, I add the photo. Um, I do warn you, this <laughs> is potentially cuteness overload. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, it is. So cute. What guitar do you think am I playing? I am playing. Look at the resolution on this photo. You really did upload like the biggest photo you could take. <laughs> Here it is. That's. Here he comes. What, what could that be? I bet what? you're playing some sort of little like cowboy not, thing, acoustic thing. It's not an acoustic. I mean, it's not it's, a guitar, but oh, it's wow. uh, it's not an acoustic based guitar. Tennis guitar? record, like a Fisher Price thing. An SG. Oh, oh. oh. oh no! Semi hollow. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thumb over already. <laughs> Thumb yeah, over. the Hendrix you style. That guitar is a real guitar. You need a red SG with an F hole in it and yeah, a red yeah. neck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably... That they look be... like um, one of those pickups they put in tellies, the Christian something. Yeah, yeah. But Was this maybe... like Christmas? Yeah, this is Christmas. And uh, my pajamas say big hugs on them. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and your fingering, it's like as if you pull out, pull out the Hendrix chord next time, you know? I know. Already, I know. Uh, did, this have, did this have strings on it? Yeah. This is like a this is a strummable thing. It had like little plastic strings on it. Yeah. And also it's got a it's got a wiggle stick. So that's an SG that's with a wiggle stick and an F. It's like they just threw everything at this guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you cover all the bases. No, that in concept, that could be a really fun guitar. I agree. You got to make it happen. Is all I'm saying. You got to reproduce your childhood photo guitar anyone's as a real watching, guitar. If anyone's watching, please let us know. So Maybach guitars, Maybach first. Yeah. <laughs> <Make that overtrust. laughs> I don't want to put you guys on the spot at all, but <laughs> what, what's wrong with Ibanez? That looks like something Ibanez would do. It's pretty Paul Gilbert. Well, fair enough. Yeah, might, you might you you mean like painted f holes? Do you like that the the Ibanez double cut shape? I forget what. Oh no, I'm thinking of the Yamaha. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, we got the AX series, but that's very 
rounded fact. already. It's not very SG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, there's, there's, there's. That's about all I got to offer you to go. I've, I've got more, but that was a cute one. That was cuteness. I, I'd quite like to end Agreed. on that one. The rest are, are boring by comparison. At what, at what age did you start playing guitar? At twelve. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, then, hang on. Just just to be self indulgent for a while, and to partly answer that question, I can show you a photo where I'm older and less serious about guitar, but really enjoying it. This and um, this is the photo I thought I was going to show. Yes. This is where I thought <laughs> guitar was the coolest oh, wow. thing ever. Yeah. Not one of those traveling Wilburys guitars. Is that what it is? Yeah. I have no idea. It was not mine. It was my friend's, and it was at his house. Um, is it some sort of Dan Electro, or what's that? No, they're technically a, a, a Gretsch guitar, I think, is the story. Oh, Gretsch. All right. Really? Because he didn't play either, but he had the guitar uh, and the amp. I think they sold these as like a, uh, as, what am I, as, as like merch at the shows for the Traveling Wilburys, which was like a big, like, super group. I forget uh -huh. yeah. in it. Uh, but these like something that you could buy at the shows and like it's one of those things where every single pawn shop in America has one of these hanging up in the window. <laughs> like no one actually wants to play them, but everyone's selling one sort of thing. Wow. I'm just I'm just Googling that. They look kind of nice. Yeah. Gretsch, yeah, the T TW three hundred traveling Wilburys. I've always wondered what that guitar was. And I just told you. Well, our yeah, friendship you know. finally has a point. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> it was all worth it. It was all, all this pain and suffering. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> they, look, they looked ex actually pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, they're supposed to be kind of fun. They're like a, like a super short scale sort of thing. Uh, 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 I, I'm wow. pretty impressed with my posturing there. Um, no, that's that's radical. Like, you're doing it. I think I could be in your favorite band almost with with that photo. I would have used I would have used that guitar for your favorite band. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised it didn't occur to me at the time. <laughs> get one uh, of those. We've got a final pic picture tonight is of our good friend Dan playing a bass. I apologize. I apologize. Like that's the worst. You, you think can see me on stage? This you, is, you think this is bad? You're a handsome yeah. man. It is not yep. fair that Dan has all these like cool guy looking pictures. And, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm no, 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 no. Wait, I'm, I'm, uh, did, did you did you look at the picture? I'm playing a bass. That is pretty embarrassing. I know. That's why. I, that, what? That's why this is my last pick. Right. You know what? I was I was a guitar player and I was I'm playing bass. But still an Ivan. And I'm still playing still bass with a pick. Yeah. And how you did you pick? get going on here? Was there a guitar hanging behind you in this shot? Yeah, you're right. You're no double. Way. You're double hanging. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's oh, the a... coolest thing or the most embarrassing thing about the photo. It's. I don't know, but yeah, there's, there's actually that's the music man guitar. That's that's on my on my back. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing that bass. And I think we played Amy McDonald's. This is still live. Dum 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 dum. Ryan, I know dum. what happened here. He was playing that guitar and then someone brought out a camera and dan shouted quick someone throw me an ibanez it's a bass i don't <laughs> care <laughs> any ibanez will work forever ago who was who wanted to learn to play bass and so like we were helping him shop for bass and try to pick what bass he would buy and he ended up getting one of those and his only reasoning the only thing that made him want that bass over any other bass is he wanted a bass that had the tuners on both sides of the headstock. <laughs> like, Good point. <laughs> that was the only thing that was like an issue for him. Like, oh, I just want one that has tuners on both sides of the headstock. <laughs> Why is that the thing you're hung up on? Like, we're telling you like what different pickups will sound like. We're telling you how, like which different ones will play like. And he's like, no, that's that's the thing for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you played some cool shows in, in your lifetime compared to or at least definitely compared to me and, and it seems that Ryan, uh, Ryan also played 
worse shows than you, Dan. <laughs> well, those those were not necessarily cool shows. You know, we, we played those kind of what in Germany what's called the church fairs, where they would like kind of just drink and, and dance, and at twelve o'clock they would be completely wasted. You can see in the image if you look if you look at the background, there's some some uh, birch trees. And everything was decorated like that, you know. And, and the funny thing is, I'm I'm allergic to a lot of stuff, and Birch is, is among that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how well those gigs went. <laughs> I didn't know you could be allergic to birch trees. <laughs> Every day about birch trees is what they say. <laughs> I just realized you're inside with a tree. I didn't see that at all. I thought that I didn't see the tent. Inside? Oh, I thought it was like a sunshade, sort yeah. of like a tent, like a. It's no, 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 no. That's inside. That's like a proper like a concert hall, and they would like cut the trees fresh and place them inside the hall, just for decoration purposes. <laughs> and this is in this is in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something about that feels very German. <laughs> you gotta decorate. Bring in it. Bring in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I love a lot of drug gigs, you know. I thought this was outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just so much, so much going on in every photo. Yeah, yeah. There's something about being in a band and standing on a stage and sincerely trying to present music where like if you don't do it just right, and sometimes a lot of times when you do it just do it just right. It's still like this cringy, weird thing to look back on. Like, yeah. I got up on a stage with a bunch of other people, and we made a bunch of noise, and er everyone in the audience stood there and watched. And like, it's it's weird when you think about it that we do this. Yeah, agreed. Like you agreed. describe it and you think about it out loud, and it's like that's the thing that we do. Why do we why do we do that? And and you look back at photos and videos and it's never as cool as it feels. Like it feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well that but night especially. Yeah. Yeah, but it's never like you watch the video and it never captures like what you were actually experiencing. It's just I like, wow, that was kind of maybe annoying. not for you, but it was certainly for me. Like I thought I was being doing big moves on stage and be, and then I look at the videos and I'm just sort of slightly moving my shoulders. <laughs> but I, I felt powerful and you know and, and extravagant and yet i was just right, right no it's it's a drug it makes everything feel bigger it makes everything feel like exaggerated like everything that you do feels more important when you're on stage and you've got a microphone and an amp or something like that like yeah, and it makes us do dumb cringy things in front of people <laughs> that paid to be there for some reason <laughs> I kind of also feel grateful for having like just had the chance to perform on stage because you oh, know yeah. like with like with your band I mean you were just like young guys or gals that that wanted to hit the stage and just make some noise and be weirdos or, or you know kind of impersonate our role models or our you know stars like that and it it kind of feels kind of weird to see those images and if you say that, that those images they look nice and you know like handsome picture etc if you know the backstory if you were the performing artist you know okay well there's like 15 right. 50 year old couples dancing right in front of you <laughs> <laughs> it puts everything in the perspective but i'm still i still i don't want to uh, i want to be grateful for just having had the opportunity to spend time and and kind of yeah. you know develop your craft so to say and kind of get those experiences on too yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the only reason my bands, like especially your favorite band, ever got to play shows is because the business model back then was like this like pay to play, like get 15 bands on a bill sort of thing that all the venues were doing. And they just didn't care. There was no vetting process. They were like, is this band good? They were like, hey, can you sell 30 tickets? Like, here's your 30 tickets. Go sell these. And we'd always be like, yeah, yeah, we'll sell 30 tickets. And then we would show up the day of the show. Ah, we didn't sell any tickets. <laughs> You know, let us play, and then they always still let us play. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your tickets back. Oh, God. <laughs> what I, what I took from seeing those photos was just how clueless we were as a band. Just absolutely clueless, naive, innocent, looking up yeah. at everything, looking forward to everything, rather than actually 
knowing what we were doing and having any shot at actually being successful. You know, any any small inkling of of success was like a massive achievement for us. Like taking those, yeah. those photos in that photo shoot, that was a massive achievement. No one was looking at the drummer's jumper or the daisies behind us. Was, right. It, so I'm not, I'm not ultimately embarrassed Did you by anything. Merch? Did Pardon? you sell shirts? No. Did you make merch? We, Go I, goodness, no. No, hell no. I made t-shirts. Like I, I, oh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I took a class at a community college, a screen printing class, for the sole purpose of making shirts for the band, like I would take, the, I would show up. I actually, I tricked the uh, the, the the teacher was actually kind of older and kind of confused, and like I walked in because my friend told me about this class. He's like, "Oh, you should come check out this this community college screen printing class, and you could like print some shirts if you want." I walked in. the The teacher looked at me, and he was mistaken. He thought that I had taken the class before. He's like. Oh yeah. Oh, you took you took this class like like two years ago, right? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, go ahead and go do whatever you want, because he would let like alumni use the facilities and print stuff. So I, <laughs> awesome. I never took a class. I was never enrolled in the college. I would just show up on Saturday mornings and print <laughs> t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I would show up Saturday mornings and hand screen print t-shirts for the band so that I could have merch for the band. And we actually sold quite a few of them. I don't think it was ever really worth it, but we sold the shirt. <laughs> a lot of story. I can't beat that, but we yeah. did do merch. Um, I, I, I can't scan this into 8K, but I'll just show you on the camera. There were our t-shirts. <laughs> You've got to put that up. You got to put up a good picture of the shirts on your Facebook group or something. So it, it, it fit. They fitted nobody. It was one of those all sizes. <laughs> and then there's the audience wearing them at a rather big show. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I would pay money. This should be a thing. I guess it is a thing. But I would, I would pay money to play a show that had hundreds of people at it. Right I now. would. I would people that actually like, wanted to enjoy music. Or no, whatever. I want them to be. Paid, I want them to be paid actors who are there to make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> what that would be an amazing experience to like. Like, there's this place where you can take your band, and there's always hundreds of people there, and you pay three hundred dollars, and you get to have the big band experience. Yeah. Like, I'd do it. I'd do it tomorrow. Or think theme park. Like a theme the rock star theme park experience being a star. Oh, hell yeah. It'd be so much fun. <laughs> and you, you can do whatever you want, and the audience is paid to react and like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be it could it could be like a whole like uh, story from kind of taking your first lessons and then making yeah. some progress, almost like guitar hero kind of thing, and then you end up like the, the big finale, you end up and you have like two hundred people shouting at you and you you play your favorite song, and and that's the rockstar experience. Oh, the rockstar experience. I mean, that that is rock Power. band, but in real life, isn't it? That, that's guitar. Yeah, hero, correct. Band. correct. Yeah, yeah, rock yeah. Band experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a business model right there. You just have to figure out a way to make it worth it to have hundreds of people show up for a terrible gig that will get a fragment of three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone gets a dollar. Everyone gets a dollar. <laughs> get in here. You have to watch this show for half an hour, but you're going to get a dollar. Don't worry. <laughs> there's there's got to be like many actors that are not working right now that would be you know glad of something like that. A dollar, two dollars an hour to watch a concert. You know what? You pitch it the right way, get paid two dollars an hour to watch concerts. Like people would show up. <laughs> People would show up. Yep. Agreed. Guitar Hero, they experienced awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, the people in the chat are enjoying the suggestion. Um, How many people are watching right now? Uh, 47. Hey, that's not bad. I mean, yeah, well, the, the 47 good ones is, is the good point. Ah, four, I mean, four, 46 good ones. There. Sassy's there. Valeria's there. Fergie's there. These are all the people I can see in the chat. 
Sassy left and came back and said, you guys are still going? (laughs) 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 Which I I guess is uh, is our cue to leave in the two hour and 24 minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's a long one. A it long was a long one, one yeah. but it was absolutely worth it. There were, I mean, I knew you wouldn't disappoint with photos, Ryan, and you certainly did not. I mean, <laughs> my own live show in two hours and twenty minutes. Uh, it, I don't know if you've looked at a calendar today, but it is four twenty. Oh. and 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 Big Ear Pedals has sponsored a 420 at 420 live stream that I'm going to be doing on my channel. So anyone watching now, in two and a half hours, go jump over there. <laughs> <laughs> just we'll leave this stream going. You stay here and chat amongst yourselves, and then just <laughs> sitting on my butt doing live video for another two hours. I'm sure. <laughs> what kind of things will you be doing? Are you allowed to tell us, or what can you probably? Giggling and rubbing my face a lot. Awesome. Yeah. I wish That's I had the energy what... to stay up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds captivating, doesn't it? Yeah. The only thing is, I'm questioning how much do my kids want breakfast? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Can't they make it till mid morning? <laughs> Just leave a note out. You're on your own, kids. <laughs> daddy, well, daddy, I not, can't read. <laughs> if you never go to bed, then you don't have to wake up. Good point. Yeah. 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 But that's probably too much high quality content for one night after watching Andy's popcorn episode. <sighs> I got to see this thing. That's what you can yeah. do with <laughs> your time. You just eat popcorn while watching Henning talk about programming drums? Is no, that I, only, I only watch Henning for about two minutes. I just watch the trailer. The rest of the time, I'm talking about Henning uh, and eating popcorn and, yeah. and actually drinking <laughs> uh, 32 ounces of water, which I've almost finished. So I don't want to sort of push the level of entertainment, but I'm about to finish the second 30, not 32 liters, 32 ounces. Yeah. But 32 ounces, 32 liters would be a whole other story. You would die. I probably would. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> I challenge you to drink 32 liters of water well, that... this year. <laughs> <laughs> Set your goal and achieve your dreams, Andy. You can do it. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You did it! You did it! We Yay! did it, guys. We did it. <laughs> you need to, like, Post a video to Instagram every time you achieve your goal with that bottle. <laughs> that sounds it's like a, a YouTube short idea that I've been looking for. <laughs> you want to see some YouTube shorts? There we go. They're not, they're not shorts, they're jorts. <laughs> YouTube shorts. <laughs> oh my goodness we we have one more photo that steve has sent me on facebook which i did oh, not see no. he sent it 38 minutes ago and i've only just seen it oh, it great. is what? i've already used the word glorious in this but this is next level it is the perfect photo to finish the show steve, if you're still watching i'm so sorry i didn't get your message um what is it gonna be <laughs> this is just trying to do a photo shoot. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Look at that. I don't know why, but we brought a popcorn maker into it. <laughs> why did we do that? We we shot this at my church and there was a popcorn machine. We're like, let's bring the popcorn machine in for no reason. <laughs> Oh, was that like... background and floor already like that or did you no, put up all... like all those it's paper that i got from like the copy store <laughs> and it was colorful paper i was like well let's like just tape this everywhere and it'll be really cool looking which it is but the popcorn maker it makes no sense why is that there dude i mean I... you had an ice cream maker in star wars so i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't question the popcorn maker but i just i'm totally digging the looks that's that's just legit i mean that's, that's one of the best band was... photos i've ever seen yeah, if the popcorn maker wasn't there. This would be 
super cool. <laughs> no. no, no, I think that's the point. That's the whole point. You, you guys are around the popcorn maker. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know, but that's, I mean, that's up to the listener, yeah. to the audience. It's just a statement. I'll be honest. I didn't see the popcorn maker. I was looking at the drummer. Um, yeah. This is a, this is when the drummer started putting on a bunch of weight too, because he got a job at Pizza Hut. <laughs> Steve was the only one that I didn't that I think didn't get fat in this band. <laughs> Where did Steve work? The water shop? He worked at a, a sporting goods store. So oh, there we are. There you go. Yeah. The, yeah. Peer, peer pressure works in, in many different ways. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing image. I love oh, that picture. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. And I'm so gonna make a background like that. And but I, I can't find a <laughs> <laughs> I don't have I don't have the photos on my computer. I wonder where he pulled them up from. Well, um I've got them. <laughs> oh, there is. oh my gosh. That's peak Steve right there. Steve yeah. will be more Steve than he is in that picture. <laughs> I think that's ending on a high note. <laughs> yeah. I think if we do Gear Street again with Henning, if he lets us, one of the studios has to be decorated like that. Yeah, we should do like a Glamour Shots booth at the next like get together that we do, whether it be Henning's or TGU or NAM or whatever. Like we've got to do Glamour Shots just to be stupid. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> oh, well. Well, it's got to... <laughs> someone's named the band the White Yipes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, Sassy Cat says the way you're holding the guitar, it, it, it's amazing. It's it's. A, I know I'm so good at guitar, I can hold it like this. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even care about this guitar. I'll just hold it. <laughs> I keep. I have kept that guitar because of having so many fond memories playing it in that band. I still have that guitar. Even though I don't play it often now, like mm -hmm. I can't ever sell it because it was the guitar in that band. Yeah, plenty oh, of memories. Yeah. Yeah. Sadness. Uh, oh, right. his face. He he has no <laughs> no nostalgia at all. He's like, I'm going to sell this bass. <laughs> <laughs> that was the five, yeah, that was the five string P bass that he had, or J bass, a J bass, five My string J bass. Goodness. Oh boy, <laughs> my we chest need, is hurting from laughter. We need five <laughs> strings in that band. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've got to have five strings. Yeah, almost as many as you. We didn't need two strings in that band, and I'm talking one for me, one for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we learn the notes on the fretboard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Go horizontal. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, Brian, man. thank you for joining in and being a marvelous guest. Uh, against all odds, against all odds, yeah. um, <laughs> it was last enjoyable. time. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fulfilled my uh, legal friendship requirements. Now I can tell the IRS that yes, we are indeed friends. <laughs> I have documentation. <laughs> uh, you have, have two hours and forty-eight minutes proof that you interact <laughs> with with Andy. <laughs> well, says those photos are on MySpace. Oh my gosh! My goodness, have a your fan MySpace. Those were the days. Ooh, that is a time capsule if that's still up. Uh, I'm gonna go oof. look for it while uh, Dan asks people to give us five stars. <laughs> I'm getting the top eight guys. Go jump on the MySpace. <laughs> but first of all, iTunes <laughs> or give us a thumbs up yep. for the episode. Everyone Man. go on iTunes right now and rate and review 60 Cycle Hum. And if you get around to it, this, this podcast too. Awesome. All right. I, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was such, such a nice episode to just dive into those old memories and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. have a good laugh. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit, not sad, but certainly affected. Yeah. So I'm going to Ooh. show my kids those photos and try to explain them a little bit were you were, were you in a popular band no 
<laughs> we just pretended to be. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I, I've kind of lost it now. I've, I'm trying to find your favorite band on MySpace, and MySpace <laughs> tells me that our terms and conditions have changed since you last logged in. Mm. <laughs> like 10 years ago. I would hope so. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you to the people in the chat. Thank you to Steve for being here in chat version. And um, we'll get Steve on at some point to spill the dirt on Ryan and see if he still has his base. He does not have his base. He sold that base for good money. It's right. good for him. Good for <laughs> have a great, have a great 24, as we say in Europe. It's called, a tw it's called 24 there? Yeah, this is the 20th of the fourth month. Oh, okay. That's not a funny number, though. True. <laughs> Yeah, I got nowhere. All right. Um, thanks to Valeria and the other and Artie Smudge for moderating the chat. Um, I've just had thirty-two ounces of water, so I'm gonna leave pretty sharpish, and uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll play the that. intro. Do it, right? yeah. yeah, I did it. Everyone have a good night. Thanks, Ryan. You hey, bet. Bye. See you next week. Bye bye. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.